Welcome to another episode of the Sit Rep Podcast. I am your host, Oriskany Jim. At least I think that's my name. We've had quite a bit of a uh, challenge with technology today, but I think we're through it. Today we are joined by Sit Rep Six himself. Hello, Bill. How are you doing? Hey, Jim. Good. Hi, hello, everybody. All right. So hopefully we got all the kinks finally ironed out, and we are now broadcasting. Okay, cool. Jen says that uh, I can hear you now. Sweet. Yeah, um, I was recording some stuff with OBS last night, and so I turned my mic all the way down. So I just got what was on the screen, and I forgot to turn it back up again. That part was my fault. The internet crash was not my fault, but the mic issue was. So, what we're doing today, folks, is a look at Panzer Leader, specifically the Battle of the Bulge. It's sort of a Christmas special. Um, everyone knows, of course, the Battle of the Bulge started uh, on the anniversary calendar two days ago, 16 December 1944. Um, what we're doing today is an actual battle that takes place on Christmas Day, because we're in Christmas week now, and it's time to uh, you know, celebrate uh, Christmas, and also remember uh, people who sometimes can't come home for Christmas, because they've got more important things to do. Um, a lot of us, of course, here on the Sitra Podcast, actually all of us on the Sitra Podcast are veterans of one type or another. A lot of us have had to spend Christmases away from home, hopefully never as bad as this, Nevertheless, we want to remember that. We also wanted to do, or I wanted to do, Christmas a little bit later in the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge has a bit of a, uh, contrary to popular belief, like this photograph right here sort of perpetuates the myth. Of the uh, Battle of the Bulge, like when people do miniatures tables, they always put a lot of snow on the table. It's a winter wonderland. Uh, the Battle of the Bulge was not a snowy battle, at least not in the first week or so. It's not until you get into December 23rd, 24th, 25th that um, you see any snow on the ground. So if you're doing a Christmas, or if you're doing a Battle of the Bulge themed tabletop game, do be aware of that. Um, Nobody likes fighting in snow or living in snow, but that was actually really good news for the Americans because until the snow fell, the snow clouds were up in the sky above. And it wasn't until the snow fell and the sky cleared it was miserable to try and fight and sleep and operate in, but um, clear skies means you get thunderbolts. So <laughs> that's why we wanted to go a little bit later in the timeline as far as the Battle of the Bulge goes. So here is a uh, very, very fast overview of the Battle of the Bulge. Again, I'm, everyone has seen this on the History Channel. Everybody has seen this in Band of Brothers and a hundred other movies. We all know the deal. The Americans, and also the British, but mostly the Americans, thought that the war was more or less over. They had pushed up to the German border. The snow had fallen. It was deep winter now. It was one of the coldest winters in Europe in a long time. Everyone was pretty much sure nothing was going to happen. Or almost everybody was sure nothing was going to happen. The Germans had other plans, and they uh, mounted a last-ditch kind of a push. Um, they were going for Brussels, which is here on the map. They were going for Antwerp, which is so far to the north, what's its not even on the map. Clearly, they didn't even get close. The whole attack was a really, really bad idea. However, it did catch the Americans locally by surprise. We had something like 28 German divisions up against, initially, four American divisions. And even these divisions were not great. They included divisions that had been chewed up to Helengon in the Hurtgen Forest, that, like the 28th Keystone Division and brand new units like the 106, the Golden Lions, those, those poor bastards, like right out of boot camp. Um, they're, 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 their salty greens are still wrinkly and their boots still haven't even been broken. And now they're up the, the leading edge of 6th SS Panzer Army. They lasted about five minutes and you, know, you can't blame them. So tons of reinforcements get swarmed into the area. Uh, this is of course where we famously see the 101st get put into Bastogne. Um, although at least half of 10th Armor Division was in there with them. People tend to forget that. Um, 82nd gets thrown into the line here on the north shoulder. All kinds of stuff from uh, American 1st and 9th Armies gets thrown into both sides of the bulge to try to seal it shut. And right as the Germans were getting close to their initial objective, so I'll zoom in a little bit to this slightly larger version of the map here, um, what they were really going for was this, uh, was what was called the Mers River. Hopefully I'm coming close to pronouncing that right. And these bridges over the Mers River. After this, the terrain opens up. There's no more hills. There's no more woods. Nice, wide Belgian roads. No American forces. You're now past all the American reserves. 
it's an open road all the way to Brussels, all the way to Antwerp. Would the Germans have made it that far? Had they crossed the Meuse River? Probably not. If they did, we just would have cut them off and surrounded them. But that's what the Germans were going for, and that is the focus of today's game. We're doing part of the Battle of Selles, which of course is part of the Battle of the Bulge, where the very, very tip of that infamous German bulge, 2nd Panzer Division, part of 47th Panzer Corps, 5th uh, Panzer Army, is literally half a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile away from those Mers River, uh, River crossings. And wouldn't you know it, they get hit in the side by Hell on Wheels, 2nd U.S. Armored Division. Real quick, just to bring this up, because we've got some friends in the chat, this is one of the only times ever you could theoretically put three armies on the table and not be a complete cheese whiz. This is a, a mistake on the map. This should only be a brigade. It was the 29th Armored Brigade of the British Army. So very, 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 very few British units were involved in the Battle of the Bulge. This is the exception that proves the rule. 29th Armored Brigade was here and did hit 2nd Panzer from the other side. So if you just drew this, this uh, if you wanted to play a bigger game and maybe spend 12 hours playing Panzer Leader um, one glorious afternoon, you could technically have brown British, green Americans, and great Germans all on the table at the same time and uh, actually be historically accurate. That practically never happens. But again, once in a while, you do get an exception. We did get a fair amount of research. I won't go into all of this. But we have a pretty solid idea of what 2nd German Panzer Division looked like for the Battle of the Bulge. Clearly, we're not putting all of this on the table. The Battle of the Bulge is now nine days old. 2nd Panzer has been through hell and back, and they're also getting hit by British in the front. So there's no way you're going to see even a quarter of this uh, on today's table. Also, it's Sunday, and we don't want to spend the entire day playing Panzer Leader because we've got Christmas shopping to do. Conversely, 2nd U.S. Armored Division is coming in fresh. And this is one of two armored divisions in the U.S. Army that were designated as, quote, heavy armored divisions. 2nd uh, Armored Division's Hell on Wheels and 3rd Armored Division, uh, which we have um, featured previously in games like um, the end of Comp Group of Piper. We've done Panzer Leader games in uh, the Battle of the Bulge before. Battle of the Bulge is a very, very popular um, uh, setting for uh, Panzer Leader games. Lots of Americans, lots of Germans, lots of tanks. Locally, the odds are kind of even, so it's a great, uh, a great garden, so to speak, uh, for uh, Panzer Leader games. Speaking of which, here is our table. We're doing 150 meter hexes. Here we have, like I, uh, we said, uh, Celis earlier on our larger map. We're also looking at uh, some other towns that were in the area, and we have the objective hexes marked here in yellow. The Germans were able to set up south of Hex Row 6 and east of Hex Row 8. So this rectangle I'm kind of describing with the mouse here. This is what's left, again, of, of the spearhead of 2nd Panzer. They've been through a very, very tough nine days. Um, they've come a great distance. They've come further than anybody else in the German army. And now they're being hit from multiple directions. So they're kind of on their last legs. Um, nevertheless, they're still trying to break through here to the northwest, again, through Celis, hence that's one of the objective hexes, and we are trying to reach that all-important river that the Germans think is the gateway to victory. With 80 years of hindsight and looking at the big picture, it wasn't really the case. But to the guys in the tank turret um, on the German side that day, um, reaching the Mers River was going to split the British off from the Americans, uh, cause that uh, Anglo-American coalition to collapse and maybe even get the British and the Americans to join the Germans against the Russians. Yeah, clearly this plan didn't have, uh, <laughs> was a little unrealistic. Um, it sounds kind of absurd talking about it now, but this is what was in there. This is why they're driving so hard for these objective axes. So the Germans uh, set up according to their parameters. Uh, I'm playing the Germans. Um, Bill is playing the leading edge of Combat Command B, 2nd uh, Armored Division, Hell on Wheels. I won't get into the whole uh, setup of how American Armored Divisions were set up, but it was generally two major Combat Commands, CCA, CCB, Combat Command A, Combat Command B, and then what was later called CCR, Combat Command Reserve. 
I think in the late 40s, early 50s, we started calling this just Combat Command C. But basically, American armor divisions are set up into what we do almost call Kampfgruppe or task forces or battle groups. 40%, 40%, 20%. This is the leading edge of one of the, tw of one of the 40%. It is our, our old friends from 66th Armored Regiment. Uh, these guys are like the MVPs of the Sit Rep Podcast, um, at least for my games. Every time I go to set up an American tank game, I find myself looking at the 66th Armored Regiment. Um, they are one of the oldest and one of the most prestigious tank units um, in the American Army. And yeah, they're still around today. They almost never deploy in regimental strength, but little pieces of them you can find all over the place. So uh, Bill came in through this uh, blue uh, bar area. We've now played um, the first two and a half turns of this game. So here we are on turn one. Uh, Bill's making a, a, a cautious approach, which is not a bad thing, because the Germans are grossly outnumbered. They're very under strength, but some of their units are pretty powerful. So the caution is not... Um, it, it's not ill-placed. And uh, here we are on turn two. The Germans have now vaulted forward and taken Celis, so we're that much closer to the Murs River. Basically, I just took that open objective hex. I want to see if I can make Bell pay for it. Or maybe I can put that victory point in the bank. Again, there's five victory hexes on the table. I need at least three of them to win the game. And of course, Bill needs three of them uh, to win the game. So if you own three, that's a marginal victory. If you own four, tactical victory. If by some miracle, either of us end up with all five, that is a uh, decisive victory. Decisive victories are very rare in Panzer Leader. <laughs> okay, so now we are partway through uh, turn three. Um, Bill has done some... Okay, so Bill, we were talking about this when we lost the Skype call. So I'm not sure what you heard. I'll go over it again. Can you share the screen, Jim? Because I don't see it. Oh my god, all this time? That's alright, I've been watching it okay. on the tube. Oh man, thank you. I was hoping maybe I was... Uh... It's been a tech day. It's, been... it's fog of war. I get it. It's cool. And then I will catch up with the chat, because we got a lot of people in chat. We have 15 uh, concurrent watchers at the moment. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so hopefully now you can see the screen. Yep, sure cool. can. All right, so um, the last move we made before we started the stream was, I'll very, very quickly reset the map, because this is going to be kind of important. Um, these uh, scouts loaded up in their M3 half tracks. Again, for you guys who aren't familiar, everything in this game is platoon based. So this is not an M3 half track. We're going to call it that all through the game. But this is a section of five half tracks and a platoon of at least 30 to 40 scouts. So this is basically these two little things here. This is the entire force of Kelly's heroes, minus the Shermans. You put Shermans, like that right there is the entire American force in Kelly's heroes. There's Oddball and his three tanks. There's all Telly Savalas' half tracks. There's all the infantry. So, and again, a hex is 150 meters. So a hex is roughly a large bolt action table, small flames of war table, and there are well over several hundred uh, hexes on the map. And this is a small Panzer Leader map. All right, so uh, what Bill was doing was um, he withdrew the scouts back here to a little staging area, and then he wanted to move up with his stack of Shermans. <clears throat> okay, simple enough. All right, so here is where we may have lost the call, Bill, so if I'm repeating myself, uh, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. But these three uh, Shermans were back here. Okay, so right. we push stacks of counters around all the time, it's a nice shortcut, but really what you're supposed to do in Panzer Leader is to move your counters one at a time. 99 times out of 100, it doesn't matter. This is that 100th time. So what happens here is this guy moves forward. He's on a road, so he gets to use the road movement rate. So to move from that hex to that hex costs him one half of a movement point. He moved one hex, double movement rate, one half of a movement point. So one half of a movement point is not a quarter of eight. You have to move a quarter of your movement rate in enemy line of sight in order to trigger opportunity fire. Sweet. So he was safe. He was safe. Now, if we go by Arab Israeli war um, movement rules, once a hex has two units in it, you can still move through it. You can even still stack into it. The stacking limit is three in this scenario because we're using 150 meter hexes. 
But once there's two units in a stack, you're no longer able to get the road movement right. Because the road, they're all herring boned on the side of the road. You know how tanks set up, on, especially in woods. Mm -hmm. um, these guys, this last platoon of five more Shermans have to drive off around the road and knock over trees. And it takes them two movement points. So two, because it's two to move through woods. Two movement points is a quarter of eight. So this third platoon and that third platoon only, platoon two, mark fours, mark fours. And uh, not only do I want to take the shot, but I also want to take it just for game purposes, but for stream purposes to get these guys spotted. Because one thing that's going to happen is these guys are going to be spotted. All right, so we're now in Bill's movement phase. One of these guys just got spotted. I'm going to take the shot. Uh, I am not within two hexes, so nothing doubles. One, two, three, four. I am not outside of half any of my ranges, so nothing halves. Pretty much the counters do what they say on the tin for once. Uh, that's going to be two 16s and two 14s. So that's going to be a grand total of 30, 60 points. So 60 total points, if I'm doing that right, yes I am. Against nine, that is six to one odds. I have to add one to my dice roll for the woods. Um, so five becomes a six. Look at that, guys. He survives. Mm -hmm. Please. <clears throat> that was opportunity fire uh, for those four tanks. So, uh, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of your movement, Bill. I All just right. wanted to, because that's a, a pretty important bit of, uh, those, those are the most powerful German units on the table, and they've just been spotted. They can probably displace using split movement fire, but they're going to have to give up those forward hexes to do so. Sure. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move our, what is that? Oops. The uh, howitzer, that's in uh, 1202. Yep. Yeah, we're just going to move him into 1203 at this point. One, two, no worries. Yep. And then the Greyhound, that's in 1402. Yep. Uh, let me zoom out here. Uh, let's see where I want to put that baby. Uh, can you put him in 1303? Sure. And that. Uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Word to the wise, this Mark IV mm -hmm. can see him. Which, uh, can you zoom out because I can't see the board. So that Mark The one's four, in the town? Yeah, my Mark IV... Which, I don't know, maybe that's part of your plan. Can actually see him in that hex. So I can't take opportunity fire because you have 15 movement rate. You have to move literally five hexes. Mm -hmm. And you've only moved one in my line of sight. So, But if he stops there, I'll be able to fire during my normal movement phase, German turn three. All right. Um... Actually, let's move him into 1406, if he, if he has enough movement. He's oh, got 15, he should be able to make that. So, one, two, yeah. three. I'm sorry, you said 15? 1406. 1406? Yeah, that's, he makes it. Yep. And because right. he's back from the ledge, we cannot see him. Only guys yeah. also on elevation one can see him. Once he gets here and he's on the edge of the ledge, then there's a line of sight. To sure. Down, but. All right. Um, as of right now, I think that is it for movement. All righty. Yeah, those moved, those moved, those moved, those moved. Uh, um, help me uh, with no a cool question. Yep, sure. Uh, um, infantry assaulting armor. Ooh, that's pretty dangerous um, for both sides. Yes, what are we look? What are we uh, thinking about? Uh, my infantry that's in 1302 assaulting the guys in the woods because they've already fired opportunity fire. So. Okay, so I got you. Um, you can drive up to them and uh -huh. dismount, so mm -hmm. you'd be able to assault them next turn. 
So how catatouts work work are you're allowed to the infantry's if the infantry's already dismounted. Uh huh. Of course they're. If the infantry just happen to be like, say you as far back as right. they have movement rates of two. One, two. If they survive any opportunity fire, which they would, because they've already taken opportunity fire, you can launch an immediate cat attack, and it gets pretty deadly. You cannot do that, however, while mounted. So they, they'd have to do is um, technically one half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. They could dismount there. They wouldn't take any fire because they've already fired. Right. And I could not overrun them because that's I've already done my attack this turn. Um, opportunity fire is always taking your attack early. So those Panthers and Mark IVs can move up to half their movement on my turn. They cannot attack anyone in any way. Um, and then once they dismount your infantry, then they could attack uh, next turn if those Germans were still there. You know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. Yep. Um, you're going to have to spread that out a little so you don't cause yourself any stacking issues. Because once they unstack, or once they dismount, they, are, they now count as two stacking points. Right. So however, Can I put uh, sure. one unit in 10... Oh, is that 10 06? The one on the road, right in, right in the middle. Four, five, like right six, there? yeah, 10 06. Yep. Um, could you reach that and still dismount? Um, one, two, three, yes. By, by one way or another, you just sidestep around the road. Um, got it. Now these guys... Those Mark IVs might cause a problem. So, you're back here at, what, 1302? Mm -hmm. Half, two and a half, three and a half, Actually, unless you wanted to eat opportunity fire from the Mark IVs, mm -hmm. you can't reach ten uh, one thousand and six. In fact, yeah, uh, he, he's, he's going to get a shot on somebody anyway. Yeah. Um. So it's up to you. Yeah. No. Uh, we'll go ahead and put one in uh, ten o six, one in ten o five, and then the one in eleven o five. It's I. I I'm gonna end up sacrificing a unit, so okay for an assault. So. Um, but that what that does for me is it spots you. So totally, um, and that is an objective X. All right, so cool. That Panthers are Panther. I wish that Mark IV is gonna take a poke. He is 14. He's within half, not within two, so it just stays at 14. 14 versus three is four to one, because uh, you always round in favor of the defender. Four to one. One through a four kills. A two. He is smoked. It is, they were still in the unit when that happened, so yep. that's both units. And then this guy. All right, cool. And he has now taken opportunity fire as well. So further movement now would be pretty open because all these guys have shot. Those five tank platoons have all fired. That's like... 50% of the German firepower is just in those five counters, probably. Right. Let's see what I got stacked there. Got stacked there. All right. So let's go ahead and move my. Oh, no, not my mortars. Um, my headquarters company. Okay. Or section. Let's go ahead and move them to 1506. Okay. And then uh, those two infantry companies that are sitting there in 1703. It's a machine gun section and an engineer section. Yeah. Let's go ahead and move them to 1705. How did that happen? Weird. Okay. And I believe that's everything that's been moved. I think that was the last of it. Okay. Um, sweet. So that concludes. Uh, there are no... Oh, these guys are dismounted. Sorry. Because you move, you're you you're allowed to dismount in this scenario. It depends on the size of the unit and gun, but everything in this scenario, it's fine. You're allowed right. to um, dismount if you move half of your movement or less. 
you can dismount that same turn. Bring to front. Cool. So we got some infantry with boots on the ground. All right, cool. We now go to the German phase. Did any of these guys? No, like if they dismount, they will uh, cause a stacking problem. Yeah, no, they're fine the way they are. Cool. All right, so we go now to German turn three. German turn three. It's time to call in some RT. Problem is, I have to still have the unit that's calling it in. I have to still have him calling it in. Okay, and that's it for my howitzers. Now what's my mortars gonna do? If anything. Mortar, mortar, mortar. What will my mortars do? No one knows. Ooh, actually, just for fun. <coughs> Alright, cool. That is... down on the wrong row. That's for turn five, dummy. Okay, cool. My artillery is called in. Um, so my artillery is now mm -hmm. going to land on my artillery from last turn. I called it in on turn two. It's now impacting on turn three. Everything lands in a hex 1103. Okay, the problem is I do not have 1103 spotted. I have the hex spotted. I don't have the units in there spotted. So I have to Go ahead and try this. All right, so my heavy howitzers, not heavy, they're 10.5s. Do they hit anything in hex 1103? Let's see. Yes, they do with a one, lucky mm. die roll. And then my mortars do not with a five. My mortars scatter by one and they scatter into hex number four. That is directly south. So they land in 1104. So my mortars land here. I'm sorry, my mortars yeah, landed in 1104. My howitzers land here. So the howitzers I'm talking about, guys, are my Vespas. Which, if I screw up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woof, I barely made it. Those, uh, they have, you do have a minimum range. The minimum range is a quarter of their maximum range. But they're more than eight hexes away, barely. All right, cool. So 13 points versus nine. The problem is it's H-class firepower, high explosive, i.e. not armor piercing, landing on armor targets. So I divide in half. It becomes seven, or six and a half, seven, whatever you want to call it. Seven versus nine. That becomes one to two odds. Add one to the die roll. It affects all three targets individually. So what that means, long story short, take your first shot, is I roll three times on the one to two row. I can't kill anybody, but I might disrupt somebody. I have to add one to the result. So I'm looking for ones and twos. There are three platoons in that stack and they all whiff. So that gets right as a seven, a six, and a five. All those are no effect. Whew. German artillery is, I mean, it was never gonna kill anything, but I don't know, cut some radio antenna, mm -hmm. cause some problems, basically pin down some units, but it missed. And my new artillery is called in for turn three landing on turn four all right that's it for that um if i go to direct fire these guys have all already fired what other direct fire do i have hey look my mg42 can splatter against your easy eights two to ten is one to five i.e illegal two to nine also one to five i.e illegal so i won't be doing any of that Nothing in range, nothing in sight that I haven't already fired. My Stugs are happy over here in Salus. My little German armored cars are happy. 
Second Panzer did have those, by the way. That's one of those units you see on, like, everyone's bolt action table. And it's like, bro, do you realize how rare those units are? <laughs> Fortunately, Second Panzer did have them. Um, not many. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and skip over my uh, movement phase. I'm, or my fire phase. I'm going to have to go straight to movement. All right, so he fired, can't move. He fired, can't move. Real quick. Well, he, that, that's, that tank is already spotted. Units saw that. Units saw that. Those mortars are now spotted. So everyone is... Oh, God, those were mortars. The mortars were here. Okay, did anyone see the mortars? I don't think so. Let me check. Line of sight's really important in this game, folks. It takes a minute to figure out. I think those mortars are still safe. Clips through these hexes here. No, 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 no. All right, cool. Those mortars are still safe. My engineers are okay. All right, cool. So, but those tanks are spotted. Maybe I have to move them now. All right, so that's going to be it for German direct fire. There really wasn't any. Go to German movement phase. We are going to fall back deeper into that tree line and therefore no longer be spotted. Um, my verbal wind. <laughs> Actually, oh, that's my commander. What the hell is he doing that far forward? Oh my god. One half, two and a half. I don't think anybody can see him at that exact moment. Because that's the same hex that the mortars are in. Then he backs up into there. The verbal vin goes up. One. Or I should say one half, one and a half. And then this guy backs up. So I don't think anything's spotted there, although it's a much weaker unit now. Where are my tanks? All right. I'm trying to, I mean, guys, I'm on defense. My job is to delay battles as long as I can. Okay, and that's gonna be it for German movement. Let's start turn four. The bad news is that some uh, Allied air power potentially shows up this turn. Also, I will take a moment to catch up with Mr. Chan. So uh, thanks very much, John, for coming out. Uh, we've got LSR 2590, Dylan's with us, Tuffy Ears is with us, KRL43 is with us. Oh, we got a pretty decent audience. Hex to Hex is with us. Good stuff, gang. Thanks very much, Hex to Hex. Yeah, I'm I'm playing Mr. You know, spoiling defense here. I'm being kind of cheesy, to be honest. But against this much American firepower, I have to be. All right, so that's it for German movement. We're now into American turn four. Mm -hmm. uh, we start with calling in new artillery. Uh, my uh, howitzers from 25 -0. Okay, well, oh, hold on. We call in the new artillery first, then we resolve. Right? Yeah, I already have it. Oh, okay, cool. I already, if you already got yeah, it, yeah. sweet. Yep. And let's go ahead and get to the next step. Resolve last turn's artillery. Yeah. So cool. 2501 into 1109. Cool. Nothing in there is spotted uh, at the moment. Nevertheless, um, you still can still roll on uh, scatter. <clears throat> so 2d6s, you're looking for ones and twos. I got a two and a six. Sweet. So one uh, artillery strike dissipates completely. One artillery strike, however, does land on target. So that's going to be 13. It affects both things in the hex uh, equally. One mm -hmm. of them is a... Um, they are in concrete buildings, however. So it's going to be 13 versus six. Sorry, seven. We'll round up. Seven versus six. However, concrete buildings give you five points, so that becomes 11. So it's a one to two odds, and you have to roll one to the die roll. Okay. To knock out that verbal wind. 
I got a two. That does, knock, that does knock him out. Sweet. Now, conversely, the 13 against the engineers, the German combat engineers, does not have, because they're not armored targets, but they have a defensive 10. 10 plus 5 equals 15, so you're on the same row. Uh, 1 to 2, add 1 to the die roll. Uh, I got a 5. So that becomes a 6, so no effect there. Nothing. But they are pinned down. Cool. Alright. And um, air power now comes on the table, if you want it. They don't have to attack anything if they don't want, but they can appear if they want. Especially um, since the biggest, the... the biggest German air defense unit just got pinned down. <laughs> Alright, so I have not played with air in a very, very long time. So you have rocket, I have two aircraft with rockets and two with bombs, correct? Right. So these rockets, it says 20, but what you really do with them most of the time, you should get within two hexes so they become three mm -hmm. point strikes. Mm -hmm. The issue at the moment is you don't have any armored units spotted. Right. So, and then you've got bombs. Um, the bombs are do just 30 points. Unless it's on an armored target, then it becomes 15. Um, and again, uh, it's... I don't think you've... Oh, oh, take that back. You do have armored units spotted here. But I would not waste a Thunderbolt strike on empty half tracks. No, no. Um, but before I say something that isn't legal... Well, so the question I have is, I've pinned or caused some damage to... The anti-aircraft unit in 1109, does right. that constitute a spot now? Or? Some people do, some people don't. We'll say it does. That a dispersed unit is spotted because they're in a panic state. Mm -hmm. They're not They're, they're not uh, using, you know, military tactical discipline. Okay, um, so are aircraft a one-time use only then? The main weapon, yes. So the 20 is, the 20 is, the 30 is. You know what they have, the 3 next to it? That's, uh -huh. the, that's the 50 cals. Okay. So those can be used four times before they burn through all nine yards of ammo. And again, you don't have to use, you get them for the rest of the game. You know what, I think I'm going to hold off on those. Cool, that's kind of what I figured, because nothing really spotted that yet. Nothing. No. All right. All right. So we'll just move them off to the side just so I don't screw something up. All right, but yeah, you definitely have them available. All right, yep. and then we go to your direct fire phase, and yes, you do have some direct fire targets available. Yeah. Shall we start um, all the way to the east side of the board? Yep. Yeah. These poor half tracks. The guys literally just bailed out of the half track, but they have the half tracks like parked across the street. This is a this is a temporary roadblock. It's basically the, the tactic here, folks, in case anyone's wondering why they withdraw this guy. One more turn before he reaches the objective X. Because, holy crap, each one of those Shermans is now worth 22. You've got 66 points in that hex. Those are wooden buildings, hence the different color. So I do not get to add 5 to my defense. Um, still have to add 1 to the die roll, because I do get some cover. But still, mm -hmm. it's... It's going to be pretty grim. <laughs> uh, so there's a four defense. You know what? Um, so twenty. So one Sherman gives you five to one. Twenty-two on Let's four. just do one Sherman. All right, you have to add one to the roll, so it's a one to four to kill. If you want to put two uh -huh. Shermans on there, just to make it 100% sure. Yeah, let's... No, no, All right, no. now you're, like, beyond seven to one. I'm just going to take him off the map. All right. Um, he is smoked... I know I have a German wreck counter somewhere. He is an oh, he is an armored target, so he does generate a wreck counter. But that won't cause much problem. Basically, it's it's one stacking point in the hex. All right, cool. Um, and then of course these easy eights, or it's it's even worse. <laughs> Twenty. So let me ask you this: uh, now that I've had those two Shermans sh clear that, well, yep. destroy the unit in that hex. Can the third Sherman see the infantry in the next text below that in 2408? Uh, the reason no is because there's still a building hex between them. All right. Fair so enough. So not until you move into that hex. Okay. Um, 
All right, let's go ahead and go to that one that you've highlighted. Right, so my Hellcats. One or of no, them. My Easy Eights. Yeah, easy Eights. Yeah. Twenty-eight. Because these guys have bigger guns. Twenty-eight to four. It really only takes one. At one. Just one. Tw yeah, one. It's now a, a nice, neat twenty-eight to four. That's seven to one. Even when you add one to the die roll for the town, you still smoked. Also, the table doesn't go any higher than seven to one. Anything after that is just pyrotechnics. Yeah. Boom. Very smoked. Not unexpected. Yeah. Trying to burn out the clock. How many turns are we playing? Uh, it says eight, but okay. really it's up to you. you know. eight, eight's fine. Yeah. I just need to know my schedule, that's all. All right. Um, took care of that. I can't see anything at this point. Okay, can we go... I think that's it for direct fire. Yep. So then we have assault. We will movement, yeah. So yeah, there, there will be, it looks like, at least one assault. Yeah. Which All right, so, won't be terribly strong, but you never know. No, so let's go ahead and start on the far east side and we'll work our way west for cool. movement. All right. All right, we're going to take our infantry guys in yep. the half tracks there. Yep. And we're going to move them into 2407, or how many is allowed by the rule, because I know there's that burning racks. Yeah, so you head up here, yep. click, and uh, that costs you two points. I do mm -hmm. not have line of sight on you because it is blocked. The, these little spine cases that are mm -hmm. allowed in Valor Victory are not allowed in Panzer Leader. You always get that question. Then you move in here. And you spent one, two, and a half, but I was only in line of sight, so I do not get Panzer or the wise Panzer tracks. Um, Can I, do I have enough points left to dismount? Absolutely. However, All that right, does fill up the hex. Because now there are... <coughs> now there are three units in the hex. Oh, that's fine. Yep. That's and that is... Come on, move to front. Cool. So how do you tell people in the chat um, whether or not the unit is mounted or not? If the passenger unit is on top of the carrier, it's unloaded. So these guys are still loaded. These guys are not. All right, we're going to take that second infantry unit. Yep. And we're going to move it to 2507 and dismount. Cool. One, two. Still didn't see you. One. Now I do see you, but I've only got one movement. Uh, we've only spent one movement in your in the hex. He now dismounts. Dismounting does take up half the movement. So the Panzer Shrek is going to fire at the half track. Bad news for the Americans. Good news for the American. Oh my God! Good news for the Americans. That only happens after he's unloading. In fact, it was unloading is what triggered the opportunity fire. So I have five points, which becomes ten because it's point blank range. Panzer Shrek. That's basically the German ripoff of the bazooka. Bazookas versus half tracks. It's still three to one. You never know. Uh, it's not an automatic kill, especially with that roll. Uh, he survives. All right. And just so I don't make a mistake later in the game, opportunity fire on the Panzer Shrinks. All right, cool. All right, uh, other movement. Uh, yeah, uh, my uh, Hellcats. Yep. Hellcat. Uh, can they move 2605 straight down to... 2508. One, one two, yes. So one two. No, no. Three. Can will it cost them more to go around, or I'm just saying one. Oh, let's two, see. One three. two, three four, five six, and they go the other way. One two three four five six. It's the same either way. It's the same. Okay. Yep. Right there's good. All right. That is not a town. Uh, it's not a woods hex. Um, however, the Stugs is kind of the only thing you really have to be worried about there. Mm -hmm. They can't see you because of the town hex right between them. There right. are some infantry in the hex. Rifle and SMGs. Dangerous in a cat attack. Okay. Alright, my stewards. Yep. <sighs> what do I want to do with those? Here's the really bad news. There's no way I'm killing or dispersing everything that's surrounding the Mont Gauthier objective hex. So... I see some 105s in my future. 
or some bombs. Hello, Ben. Thanks for joining us. Um, oh, you know what? Let's do it. Uh, have the stewards go to 2307. Stugs, take point blank opportunity fire. 24. You want to go for kills or maximum dispersals? Let's break up the assault. Or maybe I will... Ooh! I'm going to go for multiple dispersals. 24 to 10. I'm engaging two of the stewards. So he doubles because he's within two hexes. First, actually, I can't do that. <clears throat> you only, I only, you only became visible in 2306, but you spent uh -huh. two movement points getting in there. I can't do it. So that costs two. That costs one. That's three. Mm -hmm. Three is more than a quarter of 11. All right, cool. So 24 versus 10 is two to one odds. I'm not going for kills here. If I get a one or a two, I love it. So I'm definitely doing this one on camera. But what I'm really going for here is two dispersals setting up for a nice cat attack. I get a five um, on the two to one odds. Two, of, No one's dead, but two of them are disruptive. And that's going to make a difference, hopefully, in the German turn. All right, over here to your center. Now, your Shermans, before we move off that hill, the Shermans that fired, the two that fired, can still move half their movement if they want. The one that did not fire, of course, can still move his entire movement. Okay, so the one that did like not move... Completely engulf that, uh, that Stug platoon. Exactly. All right. All right, so the one that didn't move... Mm-hmm. We're going to put it in 2208. Let me zoom out, make sure that we're not... Some people can see you, but nobody can reach you. All right. <clears throat> okay, and then um, the two that uh, did fire, they still have four movement points. Can they occupy the... Ha uh, no, we got those already in there. Um, four movement points. Let's go ahead and just move them to 2306. Okay. Um, one interesting thing, the this mm -hmm. bullshit that the uh, Panthers and the Mark IVs pulled with the fire and then move half, split mm -hmm. move and fire, Stugs do not get that. You have to have a turret. It's the one thing about it. Everyone loves the Stug. You know, I have nothing but respect for the Stug. Assault guns, like the priests, everything else, do not. Mm -hmm. You have to have a turret. So he's stuck there. When he fired, he took opportunity to fire. I can mm -hmm. go ahead and put a counter on him so I don't forget later. He is not moving. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, so that takes care of that groups for movement. Uh, if we move to the next column, uh, my easy eights. Yep. Uh, only one fired, so yep. two have full movement. Where do I want to put the I'll zoom out so you can see the whole map. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and while Bill's thinking about that, uh, guys, quick announcement. The annual evil army that attacks Santa Claus's army at the North Pole, that game has been played. It has been recorded. It's in the books. We're going to put those up. It's actually going to be in two parts, Wednesday and Christmas morning, Sunday. Nice. So I won't spoil it, but we all know Santa probably. But let me just say this, it comes desperately close this time. And some major, major characters do go down. So we'll see what happens. Oh, Stay no. tuned for Wednesday and, uh, again, Christmas morning. Okay, Jim, I cannot wait for that. In the meantime, I'm looking to see what we have for line of sight. I don't think he can see because of the ridge line. What the... Deuce happened to my pointer tool. Um, I totally had one. It's right there. It's uh, between your your anti-air. It's yep. not clearly not big enough, so let me make it bigger. Yep. So I can actually, my tired old eyes can see it. There we go. Even I can see that. All right. Also, it's white. Normally, it's very visible white on green, but now it's white on white. So it's probably going to have to change. Make it bright and sunny. There we go. There we go. All right, cool. 
Right, so where, okay. did you, where, where did you want to measure line of sight? Um, I'm looking at ranges here. Do you know? Okay. Do you know? Uh, I don't think anything has a range if I move that. All right, let's move my easy eights to two zero zero nine. The two that yep. had full movement. Two yep. zero zero nine. It's that oh, that's text. easy now. Yeah. Um, also, they have movement of nine. They get, that's the enhanced uh, engine and transmission. Easy eights not only have a better gun, longer range. Literally every number is better than a regular Sherman. Yeah. A little bit of extra armor. Definitely a longer range gun, harder hitting gun. And um, actually, I don't think it was the engine. I think they put that new HVSS suspension. John would know um, that kind of stuff. It goes a little bit faster. Now yeah. the difference between eight and nine for people in the chat. That doesn't sound like a big uh, increase. Oh, it is. Because it gives you a third point of movement before you trigger opportunity fire. And that third point of movement often, trust me, when I play all my, sh all my, uh, all my uh, Panthers, my Mark IVs die quick because they only can move two points. But before they trigger opportunity fire, my Panthers can move three. And that third makes all the difference. So many games. So yeah, those, those easy eights are awesome. So he yeah. knew he did that with uh, one, two, three, four, five movement points. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. Um, the other easy eight can move half, correct? He's got five movement points left. He can do the same thing. Let's put him in the. Let's stack them. Cool. Yeah, let's keep them together at this point. So one, two, three, four, five. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, my Mark IV saw that, but not for nearly enough time. And even if they could, don't have the range. All right, let's move. Um, ba -da -ba -bum. Let's move my. Anti aircraft weapon. Okay. Into the village. Got it. And move the hound into the village, too, and that'll take up to two, correct? Yep. That can stay. Yep. technically a burning half track section. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. The infantry. Uh, is that a mortar? Oh, um, it's this just a regular infantry squad, right? This is another one of your armored infantry sections. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's have them... Good. Put him in 2106, please. Got him. Perfect. All right. Uh, moving to the next infantry squads. Let's have um, the infantry squads that are occupying 1705 just move down one hex south. <clears throat> And let's see. Uh, John says, yeah, the Easy 8s is HVSS and a wider track, I believe. Yeah, so I think that and a slight engine upgrade, they were a little bit speedier, and the game reflects it with a moving rate of 9. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and move my uh, mortar crew. That's in 1503, and we're going to put them into... Let's see. Uh, their movement is 10. One. <laughs> Can we put them in the burning hex? Yep. In 1105, yeah. Yeah. How many movement points is that? Uh, um, it depends on how you do it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six is probably the best way. Also, it precludes opportunity fire. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's good there. All right, let's move some Sherman, shall we? Yep. Uh, the group that's up here um, in 1103. Let's go ahead and let's... Can you zoom the map Ooh. out just to go? Do me a favor. Um, roll a D6 and try to rally those Shermans. What am I looking for? They were actually dispersed on your movement phase on turn three. <coughs> your fire phase... In turn four, everybody in this game is morale B, so you're looking through. A, I'm looking for a one through a four. All right. 
Uh, four. Cool, he did rally. We forgot to rally him. All right, now it's opposed to these Stuarts who just now got uh, dispersed. So that's why that's different. Now he yep. has technically attacked. His rally was his attack. So uh -huh. he, can, he, can, he can move, but he can move half. No, half, so we're yep. looking at four. All right, can you zoom out for me, please? Yep. That's the whole map. All right, uh, perfecto. Hey, Rasmus is with us. What's up, Rasmus? All right, can we move? One, two, three. Uh, that's a, ta, 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 ta. Okay, let's do it. Uh, move those Shermans into nine zero nine zero five. Um, these ones here first, or the other stack? The stack we just rallied. Okay. So no problem at all for them. Come on. Oh yeah, uh, nobody can see you because there's that. That was I know it was annoying to have those tanks spotted and don't need to have them displaced. This is the flip side of that coin. Nobody can see you. You're totally safe. Because there's more woods between me and you. Mm -hmm. And one, two, three. He makes that easily. The rally guy. All right, so. Able Company's up. What's Baker Company doing? Uh, Baker Company's going to go to 11.06. Cool. No line of sight there between the Mark IVs, so they're like peeking behind that tree line. <laughs> one, of the, one of the drivers hops out of the tank and peeks around the tree. All right, get back in the tank. We know they're there. We can't hit them yet. All right, let's take our uh, mobile howitzer there. The okay. And we're going to move that, maybe. Where do I want to put it that's going to be effective? Okie dokie. Um, once um, he gets into 1204, he's in range to bombard Hoyt. He just won't be within point-blank range. Go ahead. Let's put, okay. put him there. And then uh, the other infantry and scouts up there. Yep. We are going to push to, what's their movement, 12? Uh, 10. 10? 5 one. if he wants to unload this turn. Alright, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh. Actually, we're not going dis, to uh, disembark, but we are going to move into 0603. Clunk. Cool. I believe that's all my move. Oh no, I have uh, two infantry platoons. Probably want to move. Yeah, we're gonna move those infantry platoons. Uh, the first one that's occupying one zero zero five is gonna go to one zero zero seven. Clunk. And the second one joins them. Yep. Sweet. Germans take opportunity fire. Um. Because I have to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's where I screwed up. I didn't. I was kind of hedging my bet. I was maybe these Panthers were going to help defend Celis, and the Mark IVs were going to help defend Hoyet. <laughs> now they're separated. If they had been next to each other, they could have all taken opportunity fire. So I made a small mistake there. Ideally, should have done this. Then this opportunity, this this cat charge would be um, charge of the light brigade. Um, but as it stands, I only have two 14s, which become two 7s because I'm using A-class weapons versus um, uh, soft targets. So it's a total of 14, not two 14s. Two 7s make 14. Do I engage one or both? I'll engage just one. I'm going to try to break one of them up. If I can break one of them up, I can cancel the cat attack. That's going to be uh, 14 versus 10. One to one, I have to add one to the die roll. Turn on Mr. Camera. Two becomes a three. I didn't kill anybody, but I did disperse one. So he can no longer close assault. Now I have just four versus 16. Oh, that's technically still legal. You can never, ever, ever launch an attack that is less than one to four odds. These American infantry are pretty badass. They have a nice high attack factor of four which for World War II is really high. 
4 versus 16, my two eights. I'll zoom in so people in the chat can see it a little bit better. That close assault is technically 1 to 4. It is still legal. It's desperate, but <laughs> it's still legal. Um, so, uh, do you want to do it? Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. So, we are going to use everybody, and Ben's going to probably pop a couple eyebrows up at me here. We are using the Arab-Israeli war rules for cat attacks. So cat attacks, the way it normally works is, um, there's all these special rules, but for cat attacks, here it is. At least until you get to Egyptians in 1973, which clearly this is not. Cat attacks versus stacks that are predominantly armored, and if it's an even mix, then the defender gets to pick. It, this is clearly two platoons of tanks. It's predominantly armored. When that's the case, you get to double. So that, f uh, that four becomes an eight. It's now one to two odds. You subtract two from the die roll because it's close assault. And it now goes up to a, I have to add, I get to add one to your die roll because I'm in woods. So we do get some protection for the woods. All right, so the reason for all those rules. Number one, uh, the reason you double is Panzerfaust and Bazookas, Piats. Once you get past, like I think it's 1942, 1943, everyone's got some sort of light anti-tank weapon. Before that, like in 1940 games or uh, Barbarossa games, infantry don't get this rule. So here they do, because these Americans do have bazookas. So we got bazooka battle in the woods, say that 10 times fast. That's gonna be eight versus the, uh, the uh, 16. Um, that's why you double. Negative two, because it's a close assault. You're literally throwing grenades and pistols and division ports and so on. I get to add one for the woods. So it's eight to 16, one to two odds, net subtract one from the die roll. All right. So, one to two odds. You get to subtract one from the die roll. You're looking for a one to kill both of them. All right, here we go. I got a one. A one? A one. Uh, we got some silver stars coming down range because they just smoked both these platoons of, uh, where are my German right counters? I know I've got some. Um, there we go. Nice. And that's about half of what 3rd Panzer Regiment has left. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Uh, again, I fully expected to just have that be a, a meat puppet, lose my infantry, and then, you know, attack, counterattack, because you had an opportunity for it. Once, hey, once you get into the bazooka stage, infantry get nasty. Uh, quick side note, again, it's nothing to do with uh, the game right, uh, right now at the moment, but... Once you get into more modern era, because we do a lot of modern stuff here on uh, Sit Rep Podcast, you basically enter what I call the RPG era. And like infantry, Egyptian specifically, Egyptian infantry in 1973, Yom Kippur War, they triple against armored targets. And if you have an engineer with you, it, uh, now you're talking about satchel charges, you're talking about Bangalore torpedoes, maybe even flamethrowers, that drops another negative one. So you're are tripling and subtracting three from the die roll. Tanks hate infantry up close. I mean, Saving Private Ryan, like the last 20 minutes of that movie, tanks hate infantry once they get too close, um, especially in woods. So I probably should have withdrawn a little bit, a little bit uh, further when um, I displaced out of those four or two fire point hexes. But again, I'm just trying to keep distance between you and these objective hexes. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rasmus is with us. Rasmus is probably looking at the snowboard and having uh, flashbacks to uh, Manstein's backhand blow. Uh, Man um, I almost called you Manstein. That was a hell of a comment. Um, Rasmus, we're looking at the Battle of Celis. So yeah, the Americans are coming out of the north. The generally, they're coming out of the northeast into the southwest. They're trying to snip the head off of um, the very, very tip of the German bulge. Interestingly, and we went over this earlier, so I won't belabor the point, Wall, there's an error on the map there. I didn't draw this map. Once in a while, even the U.S. Army makes a mistake. This is U.S. Army uh, historical. What? Yeah, they're, they're calling 29th a uh, division, not a brigade. Um, it should only be one X is the, the point of it. But, yeah, British and Americans are fighting very, very rarely. Once in a while, it happens. Shoulder to shoulder. If we were, this game was bigger, if we had nothing to do for the next 12, 15 hours, we could have a game that big, and you would have literally British brown units, tan, American green, and German gray, all on the same Panzer leader map, all at once. And not even be cheesy. All right, so that was an awesome uh, close assault. 
Yeah. I, that was pure luck. I, I have not been rolling that well for a long time. Um, yeah. So when, like, what I was expecting, like you were expecting a sacrifice, I was, I, I knew that that was gonna do damage. I expected uh, dispersals. <laughs> so infantry get pinned down, and then your tanks outflank me, and now those Mark Fours, those Mark Fours were dead. I just expected them to die on turn five instead of turn mm. four. So cat attacks always close out the turn. Just give last looks. I think we've done all your movement. Yep. All right, cool. We now go to German, turn four. You are more or less caught up on chat. That is why you bring your own infantry uh, to screens. That is why you bring your own infantry to screens. Um, actually, these infantry, Erasmus, I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that. These are right out of the book. So certain American infantry divisions, not like the National Guard divisions, but the U.S. Army divisions by 44 are pretty badass. Um, they get, they get pretty nice numbers. I, think, right. he uses, I think he meant to use your infantry as your screening. Like so you, then yeah. Can, okay. Yeah. Well, in woods, definitely. Always send your infantry yeah. first. For infant, for woods and towns, yeah, your infantry then, going yep. first. They pin the Germans. They pin the tanks down. Your tanks swing around the sides. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So it's now German turn four. I will call in my artillery. Yeah. It will arrive on turn five. Oh man, there's so much stuff that's probably going to get killed up in here. <laughs> that's my howitzer. What's my mortar doing? <laughs> You're laughing. You see what my mortar's doing this turn. Um, what's my mortar doing for next turn? Anyone that can actually see that. Survey says yes. See, I don't want to measure because then you're going to see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, actually, you. you're, you're not. You're, you're not. You wouldn't be able to move this unit anyway. So let me um, can I see that? Answer: There is no. Definitely no. Definitely no. No. Clip by uh, fifteen oh seven. Mm -hmm. Panthers can't see it. Nobody can see you, except these guys who are in the process of surrendering. Um, those surviving German tank room. So I would love to drop uh, howitzers on dispersed infantry. That's like the point. Howitzers, but like, nobody can see that house. Yeah. Damn you. Okay, um, then I will do something else. <clears throat> I also have to be careful because those German mortars do not have the reach of my Vespas. Uh, so, writing down the hex. Okay, cool. Uh, what was going on for my artillery this turn? All right, my um, Vespas, um, mm -hmm. great little unit. They are firing on these guys, which are no longer spotted because I lost my half tracks in hex 2407. And my infantry in hex 2409, sorry, 2408, are blocked by this building hex. So I'm going to have to roll to scatter. I have nothing else on high ground. Okay, I have to roll to scatter. They were landing on your priests. So here I go with my Vespa 10.5 centimeter um, self-propelled howitzers. Mm -hmm. A six, it completely dissipates. This Ooh. completely dissipates. So that artillery went nowhere. And um, <laughs> at my mortars dropped a smoke screen to hex 1107 to help cover the support uh, the withdrawal of my Mark IVs. Oh, are okay. not withdrawing anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for that. Uh, okay, that's it for my artillery phase. Uh, let's go to direct fire. Okay. Uh, I did take opportunity fire over here, so not a lot's happening yet. This half track did not fire yet. Correct. Although he's got nothing that he can really shoot at. Um, yeah, now because it would be f two against ten, it's one to five. That's illegal. Um, I've got plans for these other two units. So technically, well, I am within uh, two hexes. 
So two against five, that's one to three. You never know, I might get lucky. Can I shoot the headlight out of some of those stores? <laughs> one to three odds. This is a, this is a kind of a Hail Mary here. Uh, a four, I no one missed. All right, cool. So um, he's already fired. He has now taken direct fire. Close assault, close assault. He's taking fire. That wraps up that for now. Moving over. Can't see anything slash reach anything. Moving over. Going to try my attack phase. I'm going to try, or my direct fire phase, try to rally my verbal ends. Which I normally hate seeing in games. Ben's probably rolling his eyes right now. I cannot stand verbal vins in games. Two, he does rally. However, Second Panzer Division did have them. I, the reason I hate them is because everyone constantly puts them in every single scenario. You'd realize that the Germans made a lot like 95 of those nationwide, and only maybe 50 of them ever actually saw service. Yet there's always a platoon of them on the table because they always need some kind of air support. All right, so. However, like I said, when we did our research, um, won't belabor the point, but they do have them. They also have some Ostwins. So the exception that proves the rule. Uh, can't see anything. Can't see anything. Can't quite see anything. All right, so next we go to movement. Do I want to move anything? He is no longer... He has never fired out of that hex. He's no longer dispersed. He's no longer spotted. So I took the spotted counter off of him. These Panthers. I want to overrun some Shermans, but that'll be the last thing they ever did. Because your opportunity to fire would massacre me. One half. One, blocked by woods, blocked by ridges. He has a pretty nice uh, escape path over to here. And I'm just trying to get into that X. Mm -hmm. This guy has a bit more of a challenge. One, he's, he's not on a road. So he's moving from a road hex to a road hex. Notice he's not following the road. So he does not get the road uh -huh. movement. So that's cost him a full point. But I don't think anybody can see him and or reach him. Are blocked by those woods still. So that's one, two, now he's on the road. Can my Sherman Easy 8 see him in there? Um, actually, oh, yes. But uh, I don't think for long enough of a period of time. Okay. So if we go center dot to center dot, clearly no, clearly no. No. There, yes. yes. That's one movement point. Now I'm on the road. Now, no. So you saw me for like half a movement point. Gotcha. All and right. With a, again, I was talking about the movement rate of 10, or actually even 9. I have to spend three full movement points before uh, I trigger that. That's fine. So, yeah, one of your loaders yelled out Panthers, contact left or contact right, because I'm assuming they're facing south. And by the time anyone else looked over there, you see like some, some snow spray. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, sadly, that's it. All right, let me do my cat attacks and wrap this up for my one big yep. cat attack. All right, so cat attacks, cat attacks. Almost everyone's favorite part of the game because here's where it gets brutal. That's this would be awesome if I get another good roll like uh, like Bill got against my poor Mark Force. All right, the submachine guns and the, uh, not the Panzer Shucks, they took opportunity fire, and the rifles are going to launch a cat attack. There's, they did not move to do this, so there's no opportunity fire. I do, however, have to attack the entire stack. You cannot selectively close assault. If you close assault a hex, you got to take out the whole hex. This is why the Stugs went for maximum dispersals to set up this cat attack. All right, so I'm looking at six points there and three points there. That's nine total. Primarily armored targets, Teller Mines, Panzer Strikes, Panzer Fausts. We go up to 18 versus your 15. There's three stewards in there that are five apiece. One to one. 
subtract two from the die roll, subtract three from the die roll, subtract three from the die roll when you're attacking a unit that's already disrupted. Also, a double D result will kill these two units. So those two storts are probably smoked. This one, hopefully. So I'm going to roll one big dice. This is one big counter attack. I got to roll low, please. Nice, I got a two. All right, so that two is red as a zero on the um, one-to-one -one table. He is hella smoked. And those other two stewards are like beyond smoked. He's technically there at negative one on the one-to-one -one table and they die at three. And they just rolled a zero. So yeah, that was the point. Now that, now that cost me my battery of stugs. But that's how you, uh, re that's not the secret sauce, everybody uh, in the chat. Uh, of Panzer Leader, if you ask me. It's stacking up multiple attacks on the same target. Artillery mm -hmm. followed by air, followed by, uh, I mean, in an extreme case, artillery followed by air. I did have a smoke, oh, there it is. Artillery followed by air, followed by direct fire, followed by overruns, followed by can attacks. You can technically attack a, a unit like five times in one turn. And um, that's how you do it, because now units get dispersed, and now you have an easier number, and then you disperse more units in that hex, and you have an even easier number, and you slowly kind of whittle it down. All right, that concludes German turn four. False assaults are always the last thing you do in the turn. We now go to American turn five, which okay. is very bad news for me. Uh, let's call in your new artillery, unless you already have it called in. Uh, I already have it. <clears throat> Sweet. Notes here. Um, so uh, John says, British with their hastily reissued Shermans, the tank regiments and 29th armored were behind the lines to convert to comets when they were called in to drive to Danan. Yeah, they are here on the larger table. And in previous plays of this game, when well, I just basically drew a bigger box, you can put them all on the same page with your table. You just need a little bit of uh, to do okay, so uh, I've got my fire mission for next turn. Right, cool. So this turn's fire mission. Yep. Uh, my mortars. Where, where are they? Okay. Oh no, they moved last turn, yeah, so that true, negates yeah. the, that negates their fire. Yep. All right, so that leaves my uh, howitzers. They are going priests. to. Yeah, the priests. They're gonna. Uh, they targeted eleven oh nine. That's these guys way up here on yep. the hill. All right, cool. Um, yeah, just showing off for chat. Uh, you said 11.09, I think. Is that what you yep. said? Correct. All right, cool. Um, nothing in there is spotted, but you never know. We might get lucky. So, yeah, roll two, uh, two D6s. You're looking for ones and twos. I got a two and a four. All right, so the four scatters by one hex, but there's nothing in neighboring hexes. The two lands where it's supposed to. So you have seven... Let's actually go through it one unit at a time. You've got 13 versus 15. And for people in the chat, the Pioneer Infantry, those are German engineers, they're badass to the bone. And they're also in concrete buildings, the gray buildings. So they add five to their defense. Arab is really war rules for uh, buildings. So that becomes 13 versus 15, one to two odds, and one to the night roll. Okay. So I'm rolling for all three units in there? Well, we're going we're gonna to do them. Oh, no, one, one, at a, time. Yeah, one at a time. All right, rolling uh, five. Five becomes a six on the one to two table. That's no effect. No, that's five with the one. So oh, okay. I think it's still no effect, still right? Still no effect. All right, now yep. from here it gets weird. So the Panther, you're looking at seven. It halves against 12, 17. That's one to three, I think. Seven to 15 to 17. Yeah, that's more than 14. So seven... Again, 13 gets divided in half, six and a half rounds up to seven, versus 12 plus five is 17, round in favor of the defender. That's one to three, and one to the die roll. You literally have to roll a one to disperse. Six. Okay, yeah, uh, Panthers like laugh at uh, artillery fire. Now, verbal event, not so much, because they are much, much weaker. You've got, again, 13 becomes seven, versus six becomes 11, one to two odds. Okay. Double the chance. One or a two, we'll disperse them. A uh, two. Cool. He is dispersed. Good news for your um, 
uh, Thunderbolts. Which now you have some armored stuff spotted. If you wanted to call the Thunderbolts. I do want to call the Thunderbolts. Okay. Is that the next phase in the game? It is air phase, yep. Okay. Or we go to direct fire. All right. Um, I'd like to do the uh, bombing mission to Hoyet. Okay. All right. So the one unit that, because the, the only ones that are spotted are the uh, Flak Panzers. Mm -hmm. So, and again, 30 would be divided in half because it's armor targets. Mm -hmm. uh, that would leave you with 15 on 6 plus 5 is 11. It would be a one-to-one. -one. And you have to add one to the die roll. So I can only use one aircraft? Oh, no, you can use both of them. But I'm just saying, if you put in two, now you're at, at two to one. You still have to add one to the die roll. Um, oh, you add one to the die roll for my building, subtract one from the die roll because I'm dispersed, and then double D will kill. So if you put two of the bombings, like the bombs, not the rockets, you put two of the bombings mm -hmm. on there, in form choice, you would kill on a four or less. Okay, we're going to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, one and a three. Um, well, it was one big attack, but no worries. Okay. Uh, they, they both, they both. Succeed. Well, three. So cool. we'll take the three. Um, he is smoked. Uh, technically, I've got one other small flak unit in there. Let me just take a poke with him. Mm -hmm. Or does he even want to give away his position? Yeah, that's what he's there for. Four. A f stacked with the verbal vin, that four is pretty deadly. But since that verbal vent was dispersed by your artillery, um, again, stacking up these different types of attacks on the same X really makes a difference. I have to roll a one to do anything. I roll a five, so nothing. Okay. And in fact, did I just give away my position? They, uh, the aircraft actually cannot spot. There's a special aircraft for spotting. Um, Actually, yes, I did. That, uh, ironically, your anti-aircraft unit saw that. He recognizes anti-aircraft muscle flash. These guys look like us. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, he smoked. Get him out of here. Put in the wreck counter. These German wreck counters are starting to stack up. All right, cool. And then if you wanted to use your rockets um, on the Stugs. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. the only thing that can see him now... Oh, no, you've got you've got 66 points worth of Shermans that can hit him. So it's up to you if you want to... And they're only in wooden buildings. You know what? I'm going to save those aircraft. Okay, yeah. Um, sweet. So then that takes us to uh, direct, direct fire. fire. So, yeah, yeah direct fire is going to get ugly from here. Oh, my yeah. God. Okay, so if we work our way from east to west like we usually do, um, I'm assuming you want to save these two armored infantry for a cat attack? Yeah. Okay. There is a half track that can help, and these two Hellcat platoons. It's not their ideal job firing at infantry and concrete buildings, but they can if they want. To maybe can the Hellcats oh. not? Fire on the stick? No, because they are blocked by this hex line right here. That's why the Stug did not fire the Hellcats. Because the Hellcats are right out in the open. There is a uh, half track you can blow up with the Hellcats if you want. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and eliminate the infantry and everything in that town village square okay so uh, if, we, if we put in one hell okay one hellcat is mm -hmm. at this range 28 points versus an armored target mm -hmm. versus the half track becomes concrete buildings 28 divided by nine crap that's only uh three that's still three to one yeah 27 uh three to one add one to the die roll if you put two of them in there it's six to one point is to chew them down so that that four points doesn't get added to the um, equation when we're resolving the cat attack of the other time. Mm -hmm. 
Can I see the chart? Sure. Please. So six to one, adding one to the die roll, only a six would miss. And even then he'd be dispersed. Alright, we'll use both. Alright, roll a d6. Three. Sweet, he smoked. Okay, uh, to wrap up the fire phase here, uh, try to rally this half track on a one through a four. Does rally, and I don't know if this half track wants to do anything. I don't think he really can. Can't Two. they uh, attack the infantry? Um, technically, no, because what? Or unless you, okay, legally. Can't they cat attack? Play? Do a cat attack? Or, the armored, or the, the actual dismounted infantry can. Yes. Yeah. So this guy's attack was rallying. He's out of the equation. This guy yeah. here. I'll zoom in. So yeah. Really see what's going on here. Also, aren't these counters beautiful? Whoa. Uh, but in all seriousness, what you end up here with here is two points versus the, the weakest unit has a defense of four. In concrete buildings, plus five becomes a nine. Sure. Two versus nine is more than one to four. So could the half track attack? Yes, if all the infantry helped, but then the infantry can't do the cat attack. Yeah, we're, we'll do the cat attack with the infantry on them. Okay, so... Uh um, to wrap up the direct fire phase, I, I can just, just keep the phases in, in the right sequence. I'm assuming all three of these Sherman troops or platoons are going to fire into the Stug. Yes. 66 versus 12, because I do not get five. Those are wooden buildings. 66 divided by 12 is 5 to 1 odds. You do have to add one to the die roll. Stugs are tough. One. Oh, they're not that tough. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Nine mining stugs, but the mine stugs are burning. I apologize to all those adventures. Um, actually, no, I don't. Um, boom! That is it for that. All right, cool. Back. All right, cool. We will now skadoosh a little bit further to the west to wrap up all direct fire. I don't know if the Easy Eights have any targets. Sadly. Um, no, they can't see. The, how about the one howitzer, uh, the mobile howitzer in twelve oh four? He has direct fire in Hoyet, right? Yep. And uh, I, actually, no. And the reason why, I said I know I said he would, and the reason he doesn't now is who the hell do we put him? Oh, that's right. Here he is. The one unit that was spotted is now burning. Okay. So you asked before about whether or not he could drop smoke shells. Yes, he can drop smoke shells on any hex he can see within ha uh, eight hexes, if he wants to. So I guess then at that point, we'll drop smoke into 1108. Okay. So that's my smoke screen. This is your smoke screen. Make it a green smoke screen so we can tell them apart because they're going to dissipate at different rates. All right. Um, cool. And technically, I did see that. Oh, no, I didn't because smoke screens are in the way. Boink. All right. Uh, we doing here uh if you want to try to please rally that uh armored infantry in 11 sorry 1007 seven mm -hmm. uh, i got a five does not rally yep all right and i think correct me if i'm wrong that might be it for direct fire um uh, i believe so at this time all right then we go to movement All right, uh, movement. Let's go ahead and move these uh, Shermans in 11.06. Shermans in 11.06. Oh, 
see him? Okay, I got him. Oh, 1106. All right, there we go. Yeah. I got him. And we're going to move them straight south to 1108. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, the Panther cannot take opportunity fire. Because you've spent one point in my line of sight. I was, you were blocked right. first by my smoke screen, then your smoke screen. Now you're in your smoke screen. I can see into a smoke screen. I just can't see through them. But it's only one point. Now I can take my direct fire during my turn. But legally speaking, right now I cannot do. Uh, I cannot take a uh, opportunity fire phase. Oh, I accidentally moved a the mortar section in there. Sorry about that. That's all right. And 11.06 would be, there we go. Get the right units, dude. There we go. Okay, let's move the other Shermans that are in 0905. Yep. And we're gonna move them uh, southeastward. So take them to 1107, uh, to 1207. Nope, eastward, not westward. Oh, eastward, sorry. Eastward. Uh, 12... Go to 1207 and then down to the road. Yep. All right, no problem. Again, in 1208, I couldn't see him because of smoke screen. 1209, I can see them, but that's only one moving point. And then let's go ahead and take uh, the infantry that's still viable yep. and move them down into the flame and tanks area. And then uh, let's go ahead and move the two half tracks so there's the one in six 1006 and 1005 yep and let's go ahead and move those to 1208 please all right i think that takes care of movement there um Let's go ahead and move the tank that's in 1405. Alrighty. Got it. And we're going to move that to the 1207. One of Ben's favorite units, mine as well, Angel of Death. A-class weapons are all well and cool, except a lot of the shots, especially in objective-driven games, you're going to have to be cleaning infantry out of buildings. You want that armored, direct H-class firepower. Your uh, Stu 42s, your old-school Stugs with the short barrel 75, your SU 122s, your SU 152s, stuff like that. Cool. So, um, awesome. Besides your counterattack, right. any more movement? Are those uh, easy? Yeah, I got more movement. Okay, cool. Yeah. Of course. Um, what do we have? Hello, Blair. Thanks for coming out. Blair's been, uh, me and Blair have been talking a lot on Facebook. He keeps saying he's going to come out to a stream. Glad to see you finally made it, sir. All right, let's move the easy eights to 2010, please. All right. Easy eights get old. And again, they're easy eights up against uh, these kid bashed monstrosities from like pre-war so <laughs> they don't have too much to be worried about and then let's go ahead and move um, the AA is that another tank underneath it Ooh, in, uh, it was uh, one of your greyhounds uh, greyhounds all right let's move that into 2009 Right, that was uh, technically called in the days back at M16. I never call yep. it that because people get confused whenever I say M16. Wait a minute, what era are we playing in? No, it's not that <laughs> M16. Four. Yeah, will go with it as well. Oh, sure. I, I wasn't sure if you wanted to move both units. Yep. Yep. Um, four 50 calibers on a single kind of a pivot on the back of an M3 uh, half track, and uh, because it's in a vehicle, you can carry all the ammunition you want. 
one of those things in the Battle of the Bulge held a crossroads against like full battalion of a German of a German infantry, killed over a hundred of them. Um, like knocked one complete company completely out of the battalion uh, before it finally ran out of ammunition. And had to pull out. All right, the uh, half track and infantry infantry unit that's in twenty one oh six. Yep. Would oh, like to move that. To, yep, twenty one oh six. Uh, I'd like okay. to move that to. Uh, where am I? Uh, twenty two oh eight, please, and dismount. Twenty. I'm sorry, you said twenty two oh eight. Twenty two. Twenty two oh eight. Got uh-huh, it. And dismount. Um, now, because he did vehicle movement, he will not be able to uh, cat attack this turn. But right. Set up for next turn. Yep. Oh, please ungroup the piece. Damn, I wasn't kidding. There we go. Okay, and then uh, the infantry stack that's in 17. 17. Yep. yep. We want that to go to uh, 20, 2107. Let's see, uh, 2107. Yeah, 2107. Okay, and, and my headquarters company is right. going to go into the village. I hear they got they some, can make good, it. some good coffee in there. Yeah. I mean, technically, again, for people who might be watching this later on YouTube, um, yes, the Jeep has an 18, 18 movement yep. rate. Uh, technically, you have to pay double when you're not on a road, but even if we did that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes, it's easy to yeah. make it. Um, just in case, because uh, this goes up on the Panzer Leader uh, Facebook group and so on, and so we get some hardcore crunchy. <laughs> Know, chapter, which is great, but we get some hardcore Pangolier players, and sometimes they're like, hey, I think you missed a rule back on this. I'm like, actually, no, I didn't. And this way we handle it uh, as we go. All right, last but not least, I have one more Greyhound in 1406, yep. and that is going to go to 2000. Uh, no, no. Uh, do I have a Greyhound over there? Uh, let's take that one and go to... 1308. And that's my movement. Cool. I will catch up on chat here. Um, to screen your tank, says Rasmus. Yeah, you were right, uh, Bill, uh, earlier, talking about what Rasmus was saying. Um, John adds, uh, I do like the odd edge cases. It's the same uh, with units from 30 Corps supporting the 101st and 82nd Airborne during Operation Market Garden. American Paris with Cromwells and Fireflies. Yeah, you would actually have... Uh, air quotes, um, brown and, or tan and or khaki, whatever you want to call it, khaki and green units side by side. Uh, they wouldn't be tanks, but um, as far as major tank units, getting them shoulder to shoulder from two different countries, there's like one other battle in 1940 where the French were pulling, the French were sort of screening against a German attack while the British were pulling out behind them kind of sideways. It, there's a few cases, yeah, you kind of have to go looking for them. But they are there where you can have uh, technically three armies on the Panzer Leader table all at once and have them be armored. Um, with infantry games or infantry and armored games, yeah, uh, Market Garden is another really good uh, example. Uh, Dylan says, vroom, vroom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's kind of the point of Easy 8s, man. Easy 8s and even regular Shermans will make a mess of things. Yeah, so, I mean, going back here to turn one and two, uh, Bill was coming on the table. He was being, you know, very judicious, very cautious, and, uh, you know, making sure that my Panthers couldn't see anything. And, uh, like, there's hardly any movement here between one and two. I think he was waiting for some artillery. And I was like, you know what's going to happen? I'd say three, maybe turn three, turn four. Sooner or later, Bill's going to kind of realize how freaking powerful he is. And now it's like, yeah, like, look at this one poor Panther section up against one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> platoons of Shermans. I mean, I'm going to, two of those Shermans are dead, but the other four, yeah, they're going to pretty much clean them out. Um, either that Panther is dead or the Panther is going to displace. Either way, Bill wins. Because, like Warren sometimes says on on tabletop, uh, d- dilemma tactics. That Panther's in a dilemma. Does he pull out and live and give away the objective X? Does he stand there and die? Um, and probably still lose the objective X, so I'll probably pull out, but... We'll see what happens. 
But yeah, the Americans in this game, uh, historically, when this battle was over, the entire second Panzer Division was down to 200 men, uh, combat effective. That's out of an order of battle of about 12,000. So yeah, the second Panzer gets the crap kicked out of it here. Um, is the point. Um, so at least we do, so Rasmus says, at least we do not need to uh, make Studa, Stuka noises. Well, we got the um, P-47 jugs, which are like even worse because they have five inch rockets rather than bombs. Uh, you try to attack the line between uh, two armies if you can. Yeah, Rasmus, the problem is a lot of times those are, uh, yes, there are games where that definitely, it does happen. There are lots of Panzer Leader scenarios that do create that. What you look for is what they call a unit boundary. You want to find the scene between two battalions, um, two regiments, two divisions, two corps would be nice. And the idea there is how Panzer Leader does that is they'll actually give you artillery missions like these priests, but they can only call in missions east of hex 13 or uh, hex column 13 or only south of hex row 7 or something like that. Um, units can, you know, only move on half the table. Then you've got another group of units, and you have to be very careful not to get them mixed up, and it does cause problems. One of the great things I love about Panzer Leader is it will organically teach you, like, tactical and operational problems. When you actually try to play a game with those constraints in place, you realize, holy crap, unit boundaries are a thing, and it does give your opponent an edge. He can hopelessly uh, and very, very, uh, not hopelessly, you can very, very ruthlessly exploit. Um, the problem is that you can't always identify those uh, in real life, you know, uh, in enemy intelligence or whatever. And also, as far as what we're talking about, uh, you know, putting British, French, and Americans on the same table at the same time, sometimes it's between, you know, it's usually between two American units or two British units, something like that. Multinational unit boundaries are, they, they do exist, but they're usually pretty rare. Um, cool. So, uh, we are now done with your turn, except for your close assault. So we've got two armored infantry platoons going into, I'm assuming, Hex 2408. That would be correct, sir. Sweet. All right. Um, the only thing at the moment, however, is that those are not primarily armored units. So you do not double. So, however, you get sure. eight versus, um... Four plus eight is 12, plus five for concrete buildings is 17. That's one to two odds still, because American Armored Infantry is OP as hell. Um, no, I'm just kidding. A Marine Corps Late War Pacific is like five, 10 or something. It's insane. Um, so it's still one to two. You get to subtract one from the die roll. So you're subtracting two for close assault, adding one for concrete buildings. So one to two and adding one. Sorry, subtracting one. A uh, one. A one becomes a zero on the one to two column. No, there's no mercy in this world. Soft. And these two soft units. I had some soft units. Nice. Now, everyone asks, so I'm going to say it. Uh, no, you do not get to uh, occupy that hex. I know it's dumb. It's Panzer Leader. I've checked that rule 1,700 times. Um, they want to give the defender player, if he wants to, a chance to displace additional units in there. And both turns are supposed to be happening at the same time, even though, of course, they really aren't. I know it's weird. Even if you're not going to ask, at least one person in the chat's going to ask, or people later in YouTube are going to ask, how come he doesn't, uh, he just assaulted that hex, he doesn't occupy it? It sounds weird, it is weird, that's the rule, and uh, I kind of get what they were going for. Although I do admit, it is very strange. Mm -hmm. The good news is, if I do try to occupy that hex with my last SMG unit, I'm going to expose myself to opportunity fire in the process. So, spoiler alert, I probably still will, just to be annoying, but it's, I, I'm not going to get away with it. Okay, so that I concludes... that's it. That can, yeah, uh, cat attacks always conclude the turn. So, now we are in turn... German turn five. 
Um, I have to call in my new artillery. Good grief. Although, to be honest, um, Kreb is now so close. I'm within minimum range for that Vespa on most of my stuff. Can my mortar see anything? Because we're getting to the point where my mortar is going to start calling in his own fire missions. Uh, believe it or not, that town locks a lot. I don't have these guys spotted. Next artillery is called in. New artillery comes in. Let me make sure this is legal. So I forgot. To, yes, it is. I forgot to check for. Uh, I forgot to check for a minimum range. Um. So my existing artillery came in on hex twenty four zero seven. So right here, the problem is uh, the guys that were spotting it are now dead. So now mm -hmm. it's going to scatter. Okay. What is your target? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, 2407. 2407. So the two, okay. the, the infantry that were there were calling in uh, some defensive support fire. Uh -huh. uh, no one's answering the radio anymore, so the spotter, the spotter round cannot adjust. Okay. Uh, especially with a five. So now it's going to uh, spread by one hex into number four. It's going to land on their hex. It's a good thing they're dead. Because they literally just called in artillery on their own position. Uh, um, uh, but they're already destroyed, so never mind. Germans are not having much luck with their artillery. Um, meanwhile, 0909. What did I do with that? Where the hell is 0909? Uh, 0909, there's nobody there. Plus, it was going to be a blind mission anyway. Also, I have, don't have that hex spotted. So that was illegal in any event. That's okay. Um, all right, that's it for my artillery. My new artillery is called in, direct fire. Yes, I'll have a spot of that. Just a wee bit. No targets. These are all screened by this town hex in front. All right, so the Panther's gonna be the only one um, going here. Mr. Panther is going to go ahead and take 16 doubles to 32. That still only gives me a 3 to 1. I'm going to try to uh, knock out some Shermans. 32 divided by 9 is 3 to 1. It's 32, right? Not 36. 32. Sweet. Sweet. So, 3 to 1 odds. 2. 1 platoon of Shermans smoked and uh, yeah we'll be using slow and fire when that turn of the phase comes around three becomes six is that even legal? Six? Yeah, that's legal. Right, so we'll try that when, uh, when the time comes. These pioneers will be launching a uh, close assault. Uh, desperate. That's that's literally like my Sergeant Steiner platoon there. We'll see if he can pull anything off. But we'll come to that at the time. Nothing over here. Oh my God, dude, my army is already gone. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, okay, movement phase. Um, starting from uh, east to west, just to run out the clock, boink, SMGs move back in there. Now is there opportunity fire there? Uh, yeah, if you want to take Or are they shielded by the village? Yeah. But it, it, it depends on who we're talking about. Um, shielded by the village, shielded by the village, shielded by the village, shielded by the village. 
also this armor, you probably want him to participate in another can attack. Another can I would probably save it for the can attack. But if you wanted to, half track can help, half track can help, and these two Hellcat platoons can help. Yeah, I might as well because uh, they can't do anything else right at the moment. Alright, cool. So that is 14 reduces to 7, 14 reduces to 7, so that basically becomes 14. Plus 2, plus 2, those don't reduce. So we're looking at 14 plus 4 is 18 versus 11. 1 to 1, you have to add 1 to the result. Okay. I got a 3. Plus Sweet. Three, uh, 3 plus 1 becomes a 4. That's barely a dispersal on 1 to 1. Okay. So that was, yeah, they made it in there, but then they got pinned down. He's going to be meat on the table when your next close assault phase comes. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah, because I, uh, I did that during my movement phase, clearly. And notice that the movement phase comes after, for people in the chat, movement phase comes after my attack phase. So I do not get an opportunity to rally them. All right. Um, we then, like, my whole force over there is one dispersed platoon. I got some of these pre-war uh, lawnmowers that aren't going to do very much. Empty half tracks, one rifle platoon. Um, boink. Actually, no, that's just going to trigger opportunity fire. Be cool. No unnecessary movement. All right, movement time. Uh, Panther has half his movement point. He spends one half of movement point. Can he move? He fired. Yeah, split move and fire. Okay. As long as he's got a turret. Um, I'm actually going to have to do this first. So he moves one half a point, and then he moves right down there. And then those pioneers, they gave their last letters to the guys in the Panthers, and they picked up their teller lines. And their Panzer Shreks, and all that nonsense. And we'll see. It's going to be an off-the-cuff off the off chance, but we're going to see. And that's going to be it for my movement. Um... So here it comes. Um, three doubles to six, because I'm attacking a hex that is predominantly armored. Three six versus 19. There are two Sherman platoons left in there. So it's three versus 18. That's one to one odds. Subtract, oh, I'm sorry, one to three odds. Subtract two from the die roll for can attack. Subtract another one, because he's engineers. So we're down, we're on the one to three row or one to three column, which sucks. However, I do get to subtract three from the die roll. So, a one or a two would be nice. Uh, there, yeah, another one of those, please, would be great. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. A three, I just missed. A three becomes a zero on the one to three row. I barely missed. So I got the, the very last double D. It was a three, but minus three equals zero. Um, However, those Shermans are dispersed. And that is the end of uh, German Turn 5. And we're not we're almost done with the game, and we're not even technically at two hours yet. Sweet. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my turn. Yep. And I'm do doing my... Pre-plan artillery for the next turn. Okay. And then uh, fire uh, artillery fire for this turn. Yep. Mortars, uh, we're going into 10, 11. And so was my howitzer. Everything was concentrating on that hex. Okay. Um, Just to let you on aware. 1,000, uh, whatever this is, uh, 11. One, uh, 1,011. No, 1,011. 1,000. Oh, okay, cool. All yeah. right, um, nothing in there is spotted. Oh, actually, one unit is spotted. Okay. All right, we're going to have to pick this apart slightly. All right, so everything's hitting that hex. Cool. You've got two 13s. I'm actually going to write this down. Two 13s and a three for your mortar. All right, cool. So not spotted, not spotted, was spotted. All right, so we'll do the one that was spotted first. You have 13 plus 13 plus 3. Everything's in range. Everything can hit. It's going to be a grand total of 29 points versus my 8. 
three for the unit and five for Concord Buildings. So that's going to be three to one odds and one to the die roll. Okay. Three plus one. Four. Uh, the building saved him. So the three becomes a four on the three to one odds. He is dispersed. All right. Now we're going to see if that same uh, strike scatters uh, against the other targets. So uh, roll. Oh, man. We got technically three targets here. All right. So roll for the first battery of howitzers, please. One. Does not scatter. Second battery of howitzers. Five. Does scatter. We'll see where. And the mortars, the three-point mortars. Three. Does scatter. Okay, so first we'll do the things that did not scatter for sure. Thirteen divided by two roundup is seven versus seventeen versus thirteen. So a one to three, add one to the die roll. You need a one to disperse panthers. Two. Just missed. And you need a one or a two to disperse the Mark IVs. Four. Um, okay, cool. So nothing happened there. Now the ones that did scatter are going to scatter on uh, a clock ray. This is going to be... Um, or the... Yeah, the two that did That's scatter. six. Okay, cool. They landed on these guys. Oh no, my commander! <laughs> <laughs> so again, guys, uh, they were aiming here. Uh, for people in the chat, they were aiming here, and um, they scattered by one hex. One is always north, and then you just basically count like a clock. Uh, he rolled a six, so boom. They accidentally landed over here. Much weaker units and not in concrete buildings, so this is going to be uh, messed up. So you have a 13 and a 3. That becomes a grand total of 16. Divides in half because they are armored targets becomes 8. 8 versus, so that's 2, 2 to 1. So 2 to 1. Ooh, no. We'll do this one first. 2 to 1 and 8 divided by 4. 2 to 1, add a 1 to the result. 2. 2, he is dis becomes a 3. He is dispersed. Okay, this guy, it's a different kind of half-track. He only has a defense of 2. Your 8 becomes a... Against the 2 is 4 to 1. Add a 1 to the result. 2. Smoked. So, yeah, the two becomes a three, which is enough to kill on the four to one table. And my commander is at the moment dispersed. So, I'm going to roll against my army's actual morale right now, which is four, or a B, which makes it a four. I have to make this, or else my entire force drops one morale level. I did make it with a three. Because right now my commander is pinned down. Okay, so um, that concludes the artillery phase. We go to air phase. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, rockets okay. against 0910. Okay, he is spotted because he's dispersed. So if you get close, which you will, um, I'm assuming, I have another flag. Oh, what happened to him? I guess he got blown up. Oh, yeah, he, he died up here. Yeah. Okay, never yeah. mind. I have no air defense now. All right, cool. So there's no reason not to roll right up on them. They're now worth 40 points apiece against armor targets. So I don't know uh, if maybe you maybe wouldn't want to use both of them. No, we'll use one. Uh, okay, use one. So 20 versus, becomes 40, because you're a point-blank range. Five-inch rockets, that's literally 10 to 1 uh, against okay. a dispersed target. Add one to the die roll, subtract one from the die roll. Yeah, he's dead. Also, a double D kills him because he's already dispersed. Um, it wasn't even, like, he barely, he, he, he did that with one eye closed. Um, and he's very dead. Boom. Okay, now my army is, or, uh, now my uh, commander is killed. Four. Barely made it. So, um, yes, I've lost my commander. The good news is there was an XO somewhere. I've lost my lieutenant colonel. There was a major something, you know, there, there's another guy that or My guy jumped out of the half-track in time. Basically, the army makes a morale save. Because one thing, I mean, I, I know I crow about Panzer Leader's praises every time I play it. One thing it does not have is a good command and control system. 
Um, so we kind of made one up. So all that stuff was house rules. Uh, all right. Can I use my other P-47? Yes. All right. Actually, I'm going to use the uh, bombers okay. and do a strafing run. Got it. Uh, with their, on the engineers. Cool. Um, the guy who did not fire his rockets can also join that if he wants. Because uh, he's not firing rockets. Oh, okay. As long as he's not firing his rockets. No, he's not firing his rockets. Yeah, you get four. Yep, that's fine. Cool. So that's going to be nine points versus a lot of 50 cals, but again, uh, nine points versus 15. It's one to two. You have to add one to the die roll. You might get lucky. A one or a two will do it. Two. Sweet. So let me triple check that. Nine versus 10 plus five is 15. That's one to two odds. Roll the two, becomes a three. Yeah, barely. Uh, P4, P47s threw enough 50 cal down there. They pinned them down. Now that's in the air phase, guys, for uh, everyone in the chat, which means that now we come to do the to the direct fire phase. Yeah, that air that mini airstrike there just gave him that hex. Because now those Shermans are going to fire, and they're going to blow up that hex. Also, split move and fire. Shermans do get split move and fire. So he's going to be able to occupy this hex this turn if he wants. All right, so that's the end of the air phase. We go to your direct fire phase. Okay. Um, well, let's start over in the east. Let's clean up that mess. Okay. I don't think and... there's too much going on over here for direct fire phase, because op fire, op fire, op fire, op fire. So, I mean, we're waiting for the big close assault, but that happens at the end of the turn. Well, if I'm going to have the infantry go in and close assault, then I'm not going to worry about that, so I'll wait and move those guys. All right, so moving over to the middle here, Ron Hoyette. Yep. Um, oh, there, there's some direct fire here for sure. Yeah. This is what we've been waiting for. Except they're blocked by smoke screens. Oh, no. This starts to dissipate. Um, yeah, the M105 Angel of Death cannot see through your own smoke screen. Target. Uh, nor can these have tracks, but these guys can shoot out of a smoke screen, no problem. And these guys can help. So well, a quick thing for everyone in the chat: notice my Shermans. I put a star next to the A. This is that dual-purpose gun that they have. So normally, A-class weapons have to have when firing against soft targets. You've seen the Germans do it a bunch of times this game. Shermans don't have to. Tigers don't have to. SU-152s don't have to. There's a few other A-class weapons that... Actually, SU-152s aren't A-class weapons, but some A-class weapons don't have to do this. You see this a lot more in modern games when they have machete rounds, hash rounds, um, auto cannons, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But basically, instead of dividing these 11s in half, they get to stay as 11. They don't double like H-class weapons because they're not H-class weapons, but they stay as 11s. So we have thir 33. This guy does have to divide. I'm um, not going to use him. Okay, so 33 versus 13 is 2 to 1 odds. Add 1 to the die roll, subtract 1 from the die roll, cities, and disperse. A double D will kill. What did I just say? 33 versus 26. Uh, on the 2 to 1, a 4 or less will kill. I have a 3. All right, cool. So what's the 1? Or it's just zero, right? It's, it's yeah. It's, uh, we're adding one for the town. Yep. We're subtracting one for disperse, and you landed on yep. the double D. For people in the chat, that's the difference between double D and D. Pause yep, so for the three. inevitable joke. Rasmus, now's your chance. Um, we always make that joke every pension your game. That's mm -hmm. the point. So a double D will kill a unit if it's already dispersed. Yep. Which in this case it is. Boom! He smoked. Dang, soft kill. These have no game effect. I just put them in there because it's fun. All right. And now, I think that's it for direct fire. It is. Therefore, we go to Oh, move. no, I have one more direct fire. Okay. Uh, the uh, howitzer up in uh, 1204. Yep. I'm going to lay smoke into uh, 1010, the bridge hex. Ten, uh, he cannot Can't see, see that it. hex. He's blocked by my smoke screen, oh, the smoke. your smoke screen, okay. in the woods. Alright. Well, then never mind. Okay. 
Okay, I guess we get a movement. All right, uh, movement. All right, we'll start at the top. Uh, okay. That unit I was just going to use, yep. uh, I'd actually like it to move down the road. Uh, it, let's see, what's its movement point? At? Sorry, it's a lot. Fifteen. Eleven. Uh, no, sorry, eleven. Yeah. Eleven. Yep. All right, we're going to move on the road, and we are going to go. One, two, three. Uh, where will it stop? Uh, to zero seven zero seven. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, how fast this Stuart is? It's a modified Stuart. One, two. He did that with two and a half. One, one, two. He did that with three and a half movement points out of eleven. He never came out of second gear doing that. <laughs> All right. The uh, mortar group. Yep. Uh, we're going to move that. Did the uh, mortar, yeah. no, the mortar group participate in that fire mission? Oh, it did. I'm sorry. You're correct. You're correct, sir. Um, I apologize. We get a second chance to rally this armored ar infantry. Oh. It's technically part of your attack phase. A two. Cool. This time he rallied. Okay. No, he doesn't get split moving fire. He's stuck there, but he is rallied. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Continue with your movement. All right. Um... Do these Shermans rally, or I can't remember where it faced they, um, they, they were the they, they, they were shot up by my direct fire, so... Actually, yeah, they would. Yeah. They did not do that in opportunity fire because of your smokescreen. So, yes, they also rally a uh, one through a four. Full four. Okay, so one rallies, roll for the other one. Six. Does not rally. Yep. And that counts as his attack, so split movement fire rolls. All four of these tanks can now have half their movement. Okay. Um, I'm going to put that one Sherman into the village. Okay. He's in there. All right. Um, the uh, 105. Yep. I'd actually like him to zoom out a little bit please sure okay thank you um uh, i'd like him to go uh, i just gotta be very careful what i'm doing here yeah i can't i can't take a shot at you until you spend a quarter of your movement right in my line of sight yeah um can i put him into uh, what is that one? Zero eight zero seven, please. Nice. I, I I see the angle. That is a keyhole, but it works. <laughs> in fact, yeah. What we'll say is, uh, again, just for people in the audience, rather than just plowing through the woods if you spent two points in my line of sight I could technically take opportunity fire it's a keyhole of a, of a shot but it's there so what Bill does instead is backs up and uses the road so he only spends half a movement point now I don't get the opportunity fire. so this game's got details in it folks you actually you have to get kind of tactical you don't move right. laterally uh, in front of enemy guns. You, have, you back up, do your lateral movement, and re-advance. Never move sideways in front of the enemy. Yeah. Um, are vehicles able to cross streams without a bridge? Or do we have to Yes, have it just costs two points. Okay. So in real Panzer Leader, no, you can't. But that's, also a good, that's a great question. This, uh, let's say, river was a tiny little brook. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take my Greyhound. Okay. And we're going to travel to uh, Hex 1112. And I know there's going to be opportunity fire. Um, probably not, because the guy is really fast. 1112 is... The uh, I see. Yep. And then... Oh, we're actually cross. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, maybe there will be. One... 
two, three, four, five. Um, do I want to? Do I want to? Really, he's about to enter a level twelve. Uh, the Mark IV will take a shot. Okay. Fourteen. I am two hexes away. In all fairness, you could probably do this so you're never um, within two axes. So 14 to uh, 3, that way I don't double to 28 to 3, because that's already absurd. 4 to 1. 4 to 1 is good enough. So, and that is a kill. Yeah, that's a definite kill. <laughs> Stack up the wreck counters, and uh, he now kind of joins the spotted pile. I never tried to rally those mortars. Yep. I did make it. Yep. Right. But the mortars are also have been firing out of that axe, so they remain spotted. They don't vanish because they regained order. They've been firing out of that axe. Yeah. So the only unit in there that not spotted now is the panther. That's why I've got him slightly yep. offset. It does make sense that the Wehrmacht forces would continue after the force commander was knocked out. Subordinate leaders have a good idea of the operation and could easily continue. Uh, that's absolutely correct, John. That is why it is based on the morale. So a French 1940 unit or a Russian 1941 unit or a British 1940 unit, an American 42 unit, um, everybody starts off with pretty bad morale. Um, when you lose your unit commander, you may be up Schitt's Creek. Uh, because you have to now make your morale rating for your entire army, and that's a tough role when your morale is C or D, or God help you, E, like it is for the Americans at places like Kesselring Pass. But if you're the Germans in late war, yeah, your guys are pretty pretty put together. Um, but yeah, it's based on your army's morale level. So the better your morale level, like the Israelis, the Germans, certain divisions in later part of the war, they have an A. Some American Marines, some American Army units, they have like an A. You have to not roll a six. So it's morale five for A, B is four, C is three, D is two. Technically, E is a one. So, cool. All right, so. All right, um, any other movement? Yeah, I'm going to have uh, my infantry in 1008. Yep. Uh, go to 1208. Got it. And then the infantry in uh, 1007. Yep. They're going to just move up to 1008. Got it. And I think that's every unit there that gets moved or fired, correct? Uh, here so. in the middle, yeah. Now your Shermans can, these other three Shermans can still move half if they want, but. Um. Let's see. You know what? We're going to move them. Okay. We're going to move them to 10 10. Oh. Over the bridge. Go for it. Okay. <clears throat> I cannot take opportunity fire, but we'll see what happens. Mm hmm. All right, so uh, are these easy eights going to do anything over here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, shoot. What do I want to do with them? And I got a movement of nine. You know what? We're just going to go straight down. Get this decoration out of the way. All right, one movement point in my line of sight. No opportunity fire. And then the uh, half tracks above them, yep. uh, they're going to move to uh, 20, 2111. The Greyhounds as well? Yes, please. All right. And then I don't think... You have three platoons of Shermans that haven't done anything yet. Because they did not have line of fire to help 
suppress those SMGs. Right. Uh, so we're gonna head, go ahead and move them uh, as far south as they can go. So they're eight. To... Yep. Um... So that's one going downhill doesn't cost anything extra. Two, three, yeah, four. They can they, they can move quite a bit. Yeah, put them all right there, please. Right. Actually, put them one north. So twenty two eleven. Yep. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, not exposing them to unnecessary counterattack. But they are still close enough to provide fire support. Whoa! Next <laughs> turn, now that uh, that hex is spotted. All right. Okay. The infantry, uh, it's in 2107. Okay, 2107. Got it. Yes. We're going to move those to 2212. If the, I believe they have enough. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Uh, and uh, one of them can dismount there if he wants. Yeah, let's go ahead and dismount. Because he's only spent five movement points. Yeah. One, two, three. Three, four, five. Um, the reason I'm backing him up one hex is so that he doesn't uh -huh. cause a uh, stacking issue when he dismounts. Yeah. All right, that takes care of them. Uh, they got opportunity, opportunity fire. This infantry. Yep. Yep. Okay, that's good there. Headquarters is good. Those Hellcats have half movement if they want. They have six movement points left. Oh yeah, let's go okay. ahead and move them. Uh, they have half movement, so six. Yep. Correct. Let's go ahead and put them. One, two, three. Let's put them in twenty-one ten, please. All right. Twenty-one. Got it. And I think that's it. All right, cool. Um, I would also move this armored infantry into that hex to yeah. help out with his inevitable uh, yep, yep. assault. All right, cool. So to wrap up the turn, uh, we have uh, 150 American uh, armored infantry going <laughs> after uh, a uh, one like about 40 or 50 pinned down German uh, SMG guys. That's turning into uh, yeah. This is, oh no, we made a mistake. <laughs> this whole war has been a mistake. We got 12 points versus 11. Six plus five is 11. It's one to one. Subtract two from the die roll. Subtract three from the die roll because he's doubled. Or he's already dispersed. Add one for the buildings. So what did I say? One to one, net subtract two. Okay. A double D will do it. I have a two as of my roll. So as a two becomes a zero. Basically zero. anything but a six would have killed him. Six you subtract two would have been a normal dispersal. Technically possible he could have survived that, but no. He's not that lucky. That's another soft kill in that hex. And um yeah, it's the end of the turn, so technically can't occupy it yet. But yeah, you've got it, because there's nothing the Germans are gonna get up there. Cool. That's one objective hex definitely taken. Uh, this one's definitely taken. This one's about to go down. Yeah, it's going to get uh, ugly for the Germans from here. So as of this instant, the Germans have a marginal victory. But I don't expect that to last uh, to the end of turn 8. So now we go with... So we have no more cannons on train. Okay, we go to German turn 6. No artillery because everything's too close, which my art artillery units can now move around because you don't have any fire missions. Artillery resolution phase. Uh, I did not call in any fire missions, so there's nothing that they can do. Um, the only thing that happens in German artillery resolution phase is their smoke screen dissipates. So it stays upright, and then the next artillery resolution phase, it goes off on a corner. It lasts two turns, essentially. On the second turn, you take it off. All right, so that's it for artillery resolution. There's no new artillery. I now go to direct fire. We're going to have a skosh of direct fire. I wonder if I even should do this. I know Bill's trying to bait me. 
He's like, look <laughs> at this HMC. He's so cute and sexy. Your panther, the panther gunner is just salivating way to blow him off the map. Do I give away my position? Dun, 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 dun. Survey says no. So I will exercise some discipline and not shoot. This panther platoon, on the other hand, is going to go ahead and shoot. Um, so the Mark IVs have obviously fired during direct phase, direct fire phase. Uh, I'm sorry, opportunity fire phase. So they will not be shooting again. I do have uh, my point blank Panthers. 32 to 9, 3 to 1 odds. There's one rock and one left, or do I want to disperse two? It'd be 32 versus 1. 32 versus 18, which is only 1 to 1 odds. If I had more firepower, I would do that, but unfortunately I don't. I'm going to go for one kill. Oh, this is going to suck. All right, 32 divided by 9 is 3 to 1. A 3 is barely a kill. But I'll take it. So, again, I know I always crow about Panzer Leader. This is the kind of stuff I like about Panzer Leader. That one Panther platoon has now killed three enemy armored units. Um, he's just knocking stuff down. Ping, ping, ping. He fires, he falls, but he's still going to die. He's still going to get overwhelmed and destroyed. But he's going to wind up racking up a four or, you know, a three or four, maybe even five to one kill ratio uh, by the time he's done. Welcome to Panthers in the uh, late war. Um, I think that's it. Because they already fired, they already fired. He's going to... Okay, that's it for my direct fire. No, it's not. I have some direct fire. I must take it now because I'm about to die. Here I go with ten. I do have a line of sight on this unit right here. Um... Not on this unit, it's blocked by this town hex, but he is just to the north of that. 10 becomes 20, point blank line of sight, or point blank, within, or not point blank, but I'm within half. So my regular age, almost like your uh, angel of death, doubles to 20. 20 versus 4, 5 to 1 odds. Barely got it. 5 kills on 5 to 1. Because he's, like, beyond dead. Those easy eights are going to blow him into the middle of next week. Uh, he only has a defense of five, and he's inside wooden buildings. So, <laughs> fire con deals, man. Um, then I have a close assault that I'll do um, at the end of the turn. Checking. Other movement. And these red cameras. Uh. Go to the back, please. There we go. All right, so this truck, where was it here? Yep. Um, one, two, three, truck through woods, four, five. So he had the movement, didn't expose himself to opportunity fire. Um, just pretty much setting up a roadblock. Um, he is spotted, though, so he might get chewed up by some uh, more P-47-50 cows. And that's it. My whole army is uh, pretty much gone now, except for my close assault. So my close assault is here. And here. I have three points and three points, six attacking primarily armored targets. Six doubles to 12. 12 versus six, three and three makes two to one. Subtract two from the die roll. Two to one, subtract two. A one, oh hell yeah. Two more American wreck counters. It's gonna get, it gets bloody at the end. But clearly, I mean, I'm pretty sure Bill has a tactical victory, at least in the bag. We'll see what happens. All right, uh, let's go to turn seven. Sweet. All right, cool. We start with your uh, calling in your last fire mission. Well, we'll hit on turn eight. Okay. 
I'm got that done. Uh, Sweet. Are you gonna artillery fire? Yep. Uh, mortars and uh, the howitzers. Ooh, real quick, this dissipates. Yep. Before I forget, because I will forget. All right, cool. Go ahead. Uh, they're all going into uh, hex. What is that? Ten, twelve. Ten, twelve. Yeah. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You mean ten, eleven? This one right here? No, no, twelve. Oh, okay. So they were going. Because if I miss, it scatters and not hit me. Oh, gotcha. Well, you don't want no short rounds. No short rounds. <laughs> okay, cool. So a. Uh, okay, cool. Let's roll for the mortar. D6. Okay. Oops, dice. Uh, three. Uh, that does scatter one hex. So roll a D6 to see where. Three. That uh, misses. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's roll for howitzer number one. Howitzer battery number one. Five. That does scatter. 1D6 to see uh, where it scatters. One. Ooh, it goes north. It lands on the tanks. I thought it hit me. Nice. If you had called it in on the tanks, that would have hit you. <coughs> Although, to be fair, you have the tank spotted, so it wouldn't have hurt you. No worries. It yeah, helped. you know, I, I didn't think of that until, that, and I already wrote it down, so that is what it is. All right. Cool. Uh, second howitzer. Yep. A one. That lands where it's supposed to, the empty yep. hex. Yep. So, um, we've done this a couple times now. It's nice and easy. One to three on the Panther. Three. Miss. One to two on the Mark IV platoon. Five. Miss. And, oh, now this we haven't done in a while. Thirteen does not split against soft targets. Against eight, one to one, because he's in concrete buildings. One to one, add one to the die roll. Okay. A two. A two becomes a three. Uh, the mortars are pinned down. Okay. We go to your air phase. All right. Got one rocket load left. Okay, the rocket load is going to go ahead and hit in that, that, that Panzer, right. or Panther, whatever that is right there. Okay, um, it's a direct fire weapon, so you get to pick. Are you going after the Panther or the Mark IV or both? He's worth 40 points. <laughs> Um, cause I'm assuming he gets close up. Um, however, the enemy... Let's go the... both. Okay, cool. So if we go both, it becomes 20, 12 plus 8, plus 5. You only add the 5 once. You don't mm -hmm. add it twice. So it's not 17 plus 13. It's 20 Can plus my five. other 50 cals hit as well? Um, or do we have to do that separately? If they get within two hexes, I don't see why they couldn't. It would be nine more points. Yeah, because you get within two hexes. I class weapons can attack it. Uh, I've actually never ever done that before, but um, I can't think of why that would be illegal for the Arab Israeli war rules. By the time you get to Arab Israeli war rules, everyone's got auto cannon, so this never happens. Yeah. But um, I class weapons, yeah. So that's forty plus forty plus nine, because you get within two hexes with your fifty cals. Mm -hmm. um, that is 49 against 25. That really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are the proverbial uh, shade short of 2 to 1. Uh-huh. Um, do you want to use the, because uh, you're going to be at 1 to 1 anyway. Did you want to use the 9 points against the mortars instead? Yeah, we'll just do okay. that. Okay, so we'll do that. So that's 9 versus... Eight. That's one to one against the mortars. Don't subtract anything from the die roll or add anything to the die roll because they are uh, dispersed. Okay. So, uh, three. So three stays at a three at one to one. It gets a double D. I think they're dead. One to one. Three is a double dispersal. We add one for buildings. We subtract one for being dispersed. Yeah. Once you get dispersed in this game, you're you're, you're pretty well. You lose, uh, the enemy takes one off his die roll and um, a double D uh, destroys you. All right, cool. Yeah. Now the rockets go in, uh, again, 40 against 25. Uh, if you're sure you want to engage both of them, you'll, you'll probably pin them both down. You have to add one. Like okay. you can't kill them. 
because a one kills on one to one, but you have to add one to the die roll. So you, the most you're going to do is pin them down. So if I do one versus one, then I'm at two well, if you to do, one. Well, if you do one, okay, it's it's forty points. Against uh -huh. this one, it would be seventeen. Against this one, it would be thirteen, because we have to add five for concrete buildings. Yeah. So that would be thirteen against forty. That would be three to one against one. the Mark Fours. Two to one against the Panthers. Uh, you have to. The, the easy way to remember it this is one of the reasons mm -hmm. I love the uh, combat results table from Tactical Command Middle East Edition. The kill number is the number of the mm -hmm. column. So a two kills on two to one. A three kills on three to one. The only difference is you have to add one to the die roll. So if you go after the right. Panther, you kill on a one. If you go after the Mark IV, you kill on a one or a two. This is the short version. Um, let's go for the Panther. All right, so two to one odds. Roll on the two to one, and we're adding one to the die roll. I got a two. Two becomes a three. The building saved him. But now it's that much easier to kill for your Shermans. All right, so that is the last of the American air power, except for 50 cows. Um, but no worries. Okay, we then go to your direct fire phase. All right. Well, we'll have those Shermans. Oh, no. What are they going to do? <laughs> We're going to take out the uh, Panther. All right. So uh, they're all three. The fourth guy can't help because he's still pinned. However, the other... Also, he's blocked by Hoyette. However, the other... Oh, excuse me. Do I roll, roll for uh, to unpin this uh, tank? Yeah, you do that now, and that's, that, that becomes his attack. His, his yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah, not forget it. Um, yeah. In fact, let's go ahead and do it now while we're thinking of it. We just can't add him to this particular attack. I got a one. He's rallied. Yeah, he's rallied, but he's done. Okay. Well, he saw he those Panthers get pinned attack. down, yep. and then he got brave. Um, yep. However, these three guys do have line of sight. They're all within two, so they all double. 66 points, and that oh. depends on who you want to attack. Can I attack both? Sure. Um... So 66 versus, what do we say, uh, 25, because we're adding five uh -huh. for buildings. Uh, that is two to one. Yeah, we'll do it. Go for it. Do you want me to roll individual? Or Actually, roll you, you roll once, and then that we apply different modifiers for the different targets. All right. It's one Rolling. big attack. Yep. Two. So it's a good question. Yeah, you're going to roll once, but we're going to wind up with two different results. Yep. So two versus the Mark IV. The Mark IV is pinned down. Other than that, he's okay. So again, it's on the two-to-one column. The two becomes a three because of buildings. Therefore, he's okay. However, two-to-one against the Panther. Do not add one for buildings. Well, you add one for buildings, we have to subtract one for dispersed plus double dispersal. Yeah, the Panther smoked. It's the short version. But the Mark IV remains pinned down. Oh no, my poor Panthers. Mm -hmm. Why? He only killed, like, a company's worth of tanks. I don't know why you don't like him. <laughs> Friggin' Panthers are gorgeous. I love Panthers. When they work. By 1944, they usually worked. It's 1943 Panthers. You gotta watch out for them. Yeah. Okay, um, other direct fire. Oh, God. I just looked at Lasor. <laughs> <laughs> Just bail out of the tank and surrender now, dude. The Americans have hot soup in their POW camps. You'll be fine. All right. Fired. No nope. fire. Fired. They're done. They can't see. Can my 105 see that truck in uh, the city? 910. I'm looking for where your 105. Where the airplanes are. Five is. Right here in the woods. And um, it's eight oh seven. Zero eight oh seven. I'll probably. Oh, oh, way over here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see? Uh, I apologize. Who are you? Who are you going for? The the trucks. The truck. Yeah. Yes. You can totally see the truck. Um, and All right. We're gonna shoot it. They're spotted because you have tanks right next to them. Yes. Yeah. So yep. Uh, oh no. One, two, three, <laughs> four. You're within half range. That 14 doubles to 28 versus one. It's a soft target. You don't divide. 
it's wooden buildings. The good news for the Germans, I, you have to add one to your die roll. The bad news, we're on the 28 to 1 column. You have to roll a 27 <laughs> to kill. I'm pretty sure you've got it. Yeah, that, that truck is smoked. 105 millimeter howitzer versus an unarmored truck. Yeah, who's walking away from that get together? Right. Boom. Okay, uh, I think that's everything there because I don't think the howitzer has line of sight on that other tank. This is when the M8 uh, howitzer motor carriage commander like pops his head out yeah. of the turret. He looks over at the uh, angel of death. He's like, "You feel <laughs> strong now?" <laughs> pieces of that t the pieces of that truck are still coming down. Oh shoot! Well, except for out east, we've got some more direct fire out east. Yeah, I, um, your vehicle in nine. 11 has not been spotted, correct? Um, Did it fire this turn? 9 11. Uh, yeah, he's been your... firing all. Ooh, he's been firing all the time, but nobody can see him because of line of sight. So issues. my my guy can't see him? Uh, the mobile howitzer? No. And uh, I'll get the. I lost it again? I made it super big, so I wouldn't lose it. Uh, my stupid ruler. Damn it. Maybe I deleted it by mistake. Anyway, um, so his line of sight kind of begins. Oh, it skims yeah, there. Fine, okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Let's move over to the east then, I guess. Um, yeah. I think we're down here. Yep. All right. Those easy eights. Yep. We're going to take on that nightmare of whatever the hell that thing is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Pre-war, I think it was a Skoda 105. They bolted onto a PZ-38 chassis or something. It's yeah. fine in early war, but by late war, it's just too damn vulnerable. It's also pretty good because uh, that's a range of 12. That thing uses distance as its armor. Um, unfortunately, the easy 8s have uh, removed distance from the equation. 28 versus 5. A single one gets 5 to 1. Yep, Two with a single one. Okay, that uh, he only kills on a 1 through a 4. Because he um, has to add 1. Because can I use the other 2 against that infantry that's in there? Yes. It's not so great need... because they don't have the best weapons for it, but yes. <sighs> yeah. So um, It's okay, a 1 to 4. So for people on in the chat, okay. So yeah, for people in the chat, um, it is fourteen point blank versus an armored target doubles to twenty eight versus five. That's five to one. Add one to the die roll because I am in wooden buildings. A one through a four will kill that GW thirty eight platoon from one section of easy eights. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Uh, three. Cool. He is smoked. A little, a little economy of force, and it paid off. All right. Now, it's time to... I'm assuming we're just going to pour all kinds of God's own thunder into uh, that rifle platoon in Hex yeah. 2012. All right. Yeah. Seven, because he divides. Seven. Seven, seven. So we got four sevens here. That's 28. Um, these 11s do not divide because they have dual purpose ammunition. That's the star next to the A. So that's 33 there. Um, that's pretty much everything. Uh, technically, he's got one point he can throw in. Well, the question I have is, um, the two Easy 8s and the two Hellcats against that infantry in 2012 is how much? Uh, it's half, uh, total. Seven, seven. Yeah, it becomes 28 versus 8. Three to one, add one to the die roll. Uh, I would like to do that. Kill on a one or a two. Because uh, I'd just like to wipe out these two infantry right now. Um, <sighs> if I were you, again, this is just mm -hmm. advice, I would put everything into the one in 2012. Kill him, you split moving fire, occupy that hex. Yeah. That way, if you don't kill that last one, it's annoying, but it doesn't, no, that it makes doesn't, sense. It doesn't cost yeah. you the game. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so we all end right, up we'll go ahead and do that. Total of 61 points versus 8. That is 7 to 1. Add 1 to the die roll. 
Uh, kill number is a seven. I think he's dead no matter what. She have to add one to the die roll. On seven to one. Yeah, seven is a kill. So they just execute him. Um, that's everything in there. Boom, he's smoked. And now you have uh, split move and fire. Okay. Go ahead and move the easy eights in there. Cool. Damn it. Get in the back. Move those out of here. Because well, otherwise, I mean, I've seen it happen. It's happened to me. And I've seen it happen to... Oh, two uh, easy eights can go in there. One cannot. There is a burning yeah. break out right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. The uh, wildcat shot as well. Right. Yep. So all the Sherman shot. If yep. I'm all correct. the armor. All the armor is fired. Okay. Uh, well, they all move half because they all have turrets. Can you move them? Actually, I want them to go up the road um, as far as I can towards the west. So, okay. however far we can move them, we'll move them. So they're on a road. So half, one and a half, two. Three, four, five. Uh, they can start to stack up behind. Uh, things get a little confusing here because there's red counters and other tanks in the road. Mm -hmm. But they pretty much are now, they've reached Hoye. Okay. These guys are not nearly as fast. One, two, three, four. One. Oh, wait, what's I say? One, two, because they weren't there yet. Three, right. four, five. There's a red counter in there. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Um, so these engineers over here. Oh, back here? Yeah. They're engineers? Okay. They can assault, right? Uh, well, they only have one point, and they'd be attacking eight. It's an oh. uh, illegal attack. So, at the moment, no. Okay. All right. Um, Eric, okay, so this turn, can I go ahead and move my headquarters into the space uh, in, what is that, Mont? Mont Gauthier? Yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, to the objective. I want to hex. occupy that hex. Okay. Yep. You're there. Perfect. All right. Um, the infantry that's occupying 2308, can they mount up on the half track in 2208? Um, technically, no. But what can happen, the half track can come to them okay. and mount up. All right. So he spends half a movement point, then half his movement to. So five and a half movement points. There we go. Okay. And then... Uh, now, those other guys can do that because they started off in the hex with their transport. Yeah, we'll go ahead and mount them up. Right. Now those okay. tracks can move half their movement. All right, so they can move five spaces. Um, just send them down the road to the west at, at this point. Uh, Actually, stack. I would like them to go... Go ahead. Uh, to 1911 if they can make it or as close to it as they can. One, two, three, four. Actually, yeah, they can just make it. All right. Um, because they can't get the road movement right through this village because it's all double stacked. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four. Yep. Once they get out of the village, it's, they, they open up the throttle. And yeah. Perfect. Just start cruising. All right, so that takes care of them. Uh, movement. They all fired, right? Everything in... Do I have anything in the middle that can move at this point? Uh, those three Sh Sherman troops... Actually, all yeah. four Sherman troops, because he rallied, yep. uh, can move half. Because they did fire, but they get... Uh, we call it split move and fire, turreted mobility rule. There's a bunch of names for it. Shoot and yeah, speed. yeah. Um, actually, let's go ahead and move uh, the Sherman you have highlighted already. Yep. 
Um, let's go ahead and put it in. What is this? Uh, eleven ten. Cool. And then the infantry that's in twelve oh eight. Can yep. they mount? Yep. And then they can move five, right? Yep. Okay. One, two. Now they move east, south. Sorry, west, south, west. And they pick up the road in 1009. Yep. Once they hit the road, they speed up. Well, uh, let's do that. Let's go ahead and hit them to 1009. Oops. So one, two, three, four, five if they go all the way. Yep. Okay. Let's put them right there. And that other half track that's behind them. Uh, move it right up with them, or as far as we can get it to go. Okay. Um, that shot, they both shot, so they're no good. But they're uh, the one has a turret, though, right? The 105? You're... Yes. Yeah, he does get split moving firewall. Yep. All right. I would like to move it. Let's see. Can you move it to uh, 0706? 70. Oh, yeah, that's just actually. Max. Yeah. Uh, actually, move it to 0606. No, oops. And I don't think the small one fired at all. Stuart. Oh, that's right. Oh, he did. He blew up. No, that was the Angel of Death. No, he blew up. Yeah, he blew up. No, he hasn't so, fired anything. All right, so he has... I want him to go all the way up to... 0405. <sighs> He's going for all five. <clears throat> all right. And then my infantry that's in 1008, yep. just move it south um, where it won't violate any rule. Perfect. I think that's everything. Sweet. Okay. German turn seven. I have exactly four counters in my force. <laughs> Not including <laughs> this, this mess up here in cells. Okay, right. so uh, what am I going to do? Okay, this guy is going to... Now, see, here's that rule I was talking about where they only double if they're attacking a predominantly armored hex. So if I can't attack northeastward into a hex that's exactly 50-50, the defender gets to pick and say, no, I'm not armored, therefore you do not double. So that's probably why I will not cat attack 3 against 9. Eh, maybe I will. It won't cost me anything. But we'll get to that at the end of the turn. So that's why he's not firing. I have no artillery. This artillery is waiting for direct fire targets. Um, I will try to rally these part fours. One through a four. A five, he fails. There goes that objective, Hex. Um, <laughs> okay, down here we just have the truck. Uh, the truck's fine where he is. Bail out of the truck. Take your lunch out of the glove compartment thermos out from under the seat and haul ass because that truck's about to get pasted. Alright, that will, uh, yeah, German turn 7 was uh, kind of quick. Last turn of the game. Whew. All the marbles. Technically not even at. Well, already you've got um, one, you officially own three, so you've won a marginal already. Pretty sure you're about to take the fourth one. That's going to be a tactical victory. I don't like your chances for a decisive. So I don't right. think you're going to take cells. But, um, at least not in this turn. But, uh, yeah, already got a marginal. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, I was going to do this close assault. Okay, super fast. And then close yep, yep, go ahead. I was, I was a little too quick. Also, this guy is um, Three versus nine. One to three odds. Subtract two from the die roll. A one, sweet. Oh, good shot. I will 
taken. It is a bloody game. Even if, uh... Cool. Alright, now we're done. So, take these two. Come on. Put this over here. Fix the map. Now that kill is recorded on the correct turn, in case we do a battle report on this later, get him out of there, get them out of there. All right, cool. Uh, it is your turn. There's no artillery to call in, so let's just resolve the artillery you had last turn. Yep. Uh, so everything I put into 0303. 0303. Um, They're not spotted. You did have a line of sight on that hex at the beginning of the turn. So, okay, cool. Yeah, you did, because you had a unit. These guys, ironically, can't see. They weren't here. The yeah. Or anything were here. You had something in... Oh, hell, we just put it back. Um, you had something in... Yeah, 707 could have seen it. So this little yeah. smart guy. He got on the radio. He called in the mission. No yeah. worries. All right, let's um, roll to see what scatters and what doesn't. I don't know what the mortar can... You want to start yeah. the mortar? The mortar can reach, yeah. So, yeah, uh, D6 to see if the mortar hits. Three. Does not hit scatters. Let's see if the two batteries of howitzers okay. can uh, scatter. All right, firing for two batteries. A two and a three. All right, so one scatters, one does not. All right, so the, the unit that does not scatter is seven. It becomes worth seven because it's all armored in there. Mm -hmm. Seven versus, uh, yeah, one to three against the... I said almost said Sherman. One to three against the Panther. Mm -hmm. One to two, or one to three against the Stug. And it's seven versus eight. It's one to two against the armored cars. Okay. So we'll, what would you like me to roll for first? Uh, well, let's, let's do the Panther, one to three. Okay. One disperses him. Two. Dismissed the Stug. Two. Uh, becomes a three on one to three, does not do anything. And this is a one to two for the armored car. A one. Oh, that is a dispersal. One to two, one becomes a two. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, now the. Here's what's going to get annihilated um, if it lands. Uh, roll a clock ray to see where that second battery and the mortars land. Okay, rolling a four. Oh, it lands on the southern trucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is, oh, God, 13 plus uh, 3 is 16 versus 1. Yeah, that truck is smoked. Ah, not too far. All right. Okay, we then go to your direct fire. Because I failed to rally that Mark IV. Oh, God. They probably bailed it out of the time. <laughs> they were smart, they did. All right, we'll do the Shermans um, into that hex. Okay, so now there are four platoons that can fire at them. Plus, if you want to be sure, because you oh, want that hex. Oh, you know what? We didn't do aviation. Uh, this is true. Okay, in fact, we haven't started direct fire yet, so we caught it just in time. Yeah, you've got four machine gun attacks left. Can they attack the tanks up in 303? They are not spotted yet. Okay. Then I will go ahead and use them against that uh, one tank that's holding out. All right, cool. So we Down got there. 12 points versus 17. No, it's 13. I'm sorry. 8 plus 5 is 13. 1 to 2. One to um. Two. No additions to the die roll, uh, no subtractions, because it all there are, but it, it comes out in the wash. So yeah, okay. just one to two. Uh, one or a two will kill. A one. All right, he smoked. The, the Shermans never get a chance to kill him. The fifty cal's got him. Again, guys who are watching this later might find this weird using machine guns against tanks. Harbor Israeli Wars does allow you to use I-class weapons versus armor targets at ranges of zero, one, or not, or technically. Um, Ranges of one or two. So what that does is that, that frees up all these Shermans for full movement. Yep. All right. Um, 
Direct fire. <sighs> uh, do we even want to go through it? We eventually gonna kill this guy over here. He did just wipe out two platoons of uh, American infantry over here to the southeast. Um. No. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Mm. No. Okay. Uh, what is he? Uh, defense of defense eight? of eight. Yep, in wooden buildings. Plus so he's in buildings. Is those well, concrete or wood? No, th those are wood. So it's just going to stay at eight. You just have to add one to the die roll. I, 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 I. No, we're just going to bypass him. All right, cool. At this point. All right, so here we go. Yeah, he's got the hex that mattered. Um. I've got oh, you know what, six though? versus 20. I do cat attack at 1 to 3. I can't kill you, I don't think. 1 to 3, I'd have to roll a 1 to kill you. But um, even then, I wouldn't get to uh, occupy the hex. I have no line of sight on your artillery piece down here in 912? Not or yet. Or 911? Not yet. Okay. All right, well, do I have line of sight? 0606 to 0303, or am I bypassing something? 0606 to... Yeah, you can see, you just aren't, you don't have the units in there spotted. Oh, even though I hit him with the aircraft? Oh, okay, there is the guy that, or the artillery, the guy that's dispersed, yeah. we did say that dispersed units are spotted. Yeah. That's kind of a house rule for a Panzer Leader group later, but yeah. So against the one unit, yes, you can fire. Let's do it. All right, 14 um, is a high class, or high class, a um, high explosive weapon. They stay the same versus armor within two hexes, other than that they have, because he's, he's not firing AP ammunition. Mm -hmm. That's a grand total of seven versus eight, one to two odds. No additions to the die roll. Double D will do it. A one. Oh, a one becomes, well, stays in a one. A one to two is a double D. It is one German armored car section knocked out. Okay. That's the one guy who panics when he gets dispersed. Hunts across <laughs> the street. The Panthers and the Strugs are like, Hans, get back down and down. Too late. All right. Are you there? Yep. Okay. Got really quiet all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. I'm just pretty much like looking at the <laughs> table going, oh, look, my army is like two pieces. <laughs> Three all pieces. right. I think that's all I have for direct fire at this point. Um. Yeah. Because everything else is burning. Yeah. Let's All right, just, so uh, we're going to do... Wrap it up with movement. Yep, so uh, the one Sherman that's in 1110, have it okay. move into uh, hex 1011. Cool. And then I'm going to have uh, my uh, tank in 0405 move up into 0304. Got it. And I'm going to have 0606 move up into 0404. No, this whole stack? No, the 0606. Oh, sorry. Uh, yep, still so moving fire. One, two, he's got it. Yep. And then the half tracks there, they're going to move. Oh, can I do that? I don't think he's I can do that, can I? Got scouts. No, he's not going to close us off this turn. Yeah, damn. Um,. The other half tracks down in zero five zero six. Um. Oh. Yep. Got them. Can you move those up to zero four zero three? Yep. And so then. One's empty. One's carrying some infantry. Yep. Uh, the one, one, two. I guess the ones that you want to dismount, right? Yep. Yeah, I would definitely dismount. You won't be able to counter attack because you use vehicle movement, but yeah. otherwise, the Panther will take a poke at him, and now you've lost two platoons. Yeah. And then um, my. Oh, let me see here. So, John Sowerby was mentioning uh, Donat earlier. That's.
the road that leads to the knot. That's the road that leads toward the British. 29th Armored Brigade. So let's go ahead and take my Shermans. Uh, let's take the Easy 8 and move them all the way up the road towards um, 03 up there in that town. And Celeste. Okay. Just move everything up there except right. what can hold a square. So, one to get back on the road. Two, three, four, five, six. Um, that's a truck in there, so it doesn't matter. Seven. In other words, did not generate a wreck counter. Mm -hmm. Ergo, does not affect stacking limits. Um, we're leaving that one to occupy the hex. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, five and a half. I'm not sure. I, I would be careful with those uh, Hellcats because um, these Panthers are right here and they only have a defense of four. But the Easy Eights can probably get in there a little bit more close. Like, you know what? If I was playing the Americans, I would put these guys back here. That way I'm more than two hexes away from the Panthers. And uh, I still have line of sight on the Panthers. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is no turn nine. It's not going to happen. Right. But just to right. be realistic and set it up. Yep. Um, he's got that occupied. Uh, my odds of destroying him with my artillery pieces are pretty much nothing. Uh, over here we have these this company of Shermans, wherever they're going. I guess just um, all the way to the west. Can you take one of them and put it in that hex next to your artillery piece? No worries. Just on That's the insurance. Insur yep. Perfect. Yep. I totally and agree. then the rest can go north. Northwest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's thanks double up. Yep. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. And uh, the Germans are going to take their poke for fun. Uh, just to wrap up turn eight and close out the game. Okay. Uh, moving from left to right. Shermans, Stugs, just to make it bloody. Woo. It's going to get uh, ugly. Yeah, I have 28 times 2 is 56. Oh, hell, dude, it doesn't matter. Um, at this point, the game's literally over. Um, all right, so 24 versus 5 is 4 to 1. Add 1 to the die roll versus the um, little uh, Stuart assault gun. <laughs> I have to add one because of buildings. So 24 versus 5 is just short of Tidal 5 one. to 1. So it becomes 4 yeah. to 1. All right. I add one to the die roll. I need a 3. I get a 6. He survives. Uh -huh. I think he's pinned down. Uh, I'll check in a second. I'm pretty sure he's pinned. I think you're right. 32 versus I want that angel of death. That's what he gets for murdering my trucks. <laughs> I am Hans. My brother Gruber was in that truck. You bastard. Uh, 32 versus 9 is 3 to 1. I fail against that one, too. Oh! All right, so the Americans get lucky at the end there. They don't pay much of a butcher's bill for that. If there was a turn 9, you would probably take that hex. Turn 9, turn 10. Um, down here, 13 against 9. It does not have because I am within two hexes. However, you do add, because now you own the concrete buildings. I have to add 5 to that. So it's 13 to 14, one to two odds, and one to the die roll. I literally can't curly kill you. And especially with a six, that's literally mm. no effect. And then last, Hail Mary. I have six versus 20. One to four odds. Subtract one from the die roll. I might disperse somebody. Yeah. A one! Oh, nice job. Oh my god. If I actually, I don't think I killed anyone. One to four. Net zero. I dispersed them. So this battle's in progress, but it's not looking down. Uh, on turn, the hypothetical turn nine or ten, artillery comes in. All these infantry come in and take care of this. Thing. But they're just, uh, they're, they're dying with their boots on. That's pretty much the mm -hmm. end of that. 
All right, so that is one, two, three, one, two, three. There's a fourth one somewhere. Where am I missing? Oh, four. One, two, three, four objective hexes in American hands. That is a clear tactical victory um, for the Americans. So good job. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Awesome. That was a lot of fun. All right, guys. I, I know I played it pretty conservatively in the first couple turns, but... Uh... Well, I mean, yeah, I knew that... Uh, I was like, well, I'm, I'm we're gonna, you know, give Bill the Americans. I know Bill likes to get, you know, pretty aggressive, especially when you give him a lot of tanks. So, you know, let's go ahead and uh, set up a game where you can actually do that. Because mm -hmm. way too often, especially in these built-up areas, like the hedgerows against Panthers and Stugs. Mm -hmm. Well, not really Stugs, but Panthers and Mark IVs. The Germans can just get absolutely infuriating with split movement fire. It's like, will you please just stay still for one turn? <laughs> Right. That's when you have to dismount infantry, flank them on both wings, literally like give them a bear hug, lock them in place, and start calling in artillery and airstrikes on them because you're tanks. And it's just every turn. Uh, poor Damon had a game like this. He had uh, one of the Hussars regiments in 7th Armored up against uh, outside of Kahn against 2nd SS Panzer. And it was just death, death. Hedgerow, hedgerow, hedgerow. They fall back. They fall back. Especially those Panthers. They can move three hexes without... Um, uh, without triggering opportunity fire, or I should say, mm -hmm. they don't trigger opportunity fire until they move three hexes. Um, it's infuriating, but again, it's hedgerows. I mean, yeah. Think about the hedgerows; they, they have a nightmare uh, in fighting those battles. Um, so when you when you hit German armor in cover, uh, it doesn't really happen in the east because they have these gigantic sunflower fields and all that stuff. But here mm -hmm. in the west, hedgerow country north of France, the Scheldt estuary. Hurricane Forest, and then you get here into the mulch. There's always hills, there's always woods. Um, it just becomes a real pain in the ass. So, you, And also, the Allies just had that much stuff. Yeah. Second Panzer was on its last legs. Second Armored was fresh. Probably the most powerful single tank division, armored division in the American army. Uh, if not, it was tied with a third. Um, those are the two divisions that were actually considered heavy armored divisions. They're the only ones you'll find with uh, easy eights. Or jumbos. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you, if you're gonna put those units on the table, yeah, load up the Americans with lots of tanks. So yeah. And again, historically, the Germans lost this game. They wound up with 200 people in their division. So that's you know, when your when your division gets reduced to an effective company, that's an ass whipping and a half right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um. So Jen says, I never forget the thermos. You never know what might be inside to keep you warm in the chilly woods. John, U.S. troops who searched German casualties during the bulge said that quite a few Germans had brandy in their canteens. You'd almost have to, yeah. to participate in this battle. Number one, it's cold. Number two, whoever thought up this plan must have been drunk or high or stoned or something. <laughs> might as well, you might be, might, you might as well be too. All right. Uh, so Rasmus was building a blood and plunder sloop during the game. Awesome. Hope nice. you made some good progress. He at least the framework for this loop. Nice game, gents, says John Sowerby. Uh, undercoated some Germans and carried on with painting for the British. Uh, uh, this might be for, um, what is it, OB group uh, that you were talking about, John? Um, oh, the opposing battalions are getting done. Yeah, so I think that's the game he's talking about. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that's uh, where we wound up. Oop, let me get back to my title slide here. Awesome. Yeah, thanks very much for coming out, everybody. Uh, we're rounds complete. And again, do stay tuned. Because Santa's intelligence network, the one that lets him know whether you are asleep or whether awake, so good for goodness sake. Yeah, Santa always gets initiative because he always knows when the enemy's coming. Uh, so here come uh, here comes another army to uh, try to uh, ruin Christmas for everybody and attack Santa's northern village or North Pole village and Christmas workshop. Um, we'll see how badly Santa wins this year. Uh, to make sure that Christmas is saved for all the good little boys and girls. I know that doesn't apply to us, but um, for all the other boys and girls that were actually good this year, um, <laughs> we want to make sure they still get their friends. In all seriousness, guys, we are rounds complete. Tango Mike, as always, for listening. If I don't talk to you again this week, have a wonderful uh, holiday season um, and uh, lots of sixes uh, for 2023. 
Uh, so, Bill, anything further, or are we closing out? Uh, great game, and Merry Christmas, everybody. And just a quick heads up, there will not be a podcast next Saturday because of Christmas Eve holiday. Yeah, it's literally Christmas Eve. Also, I'm on the highway. Yeah. I'm driving up to see my dad. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, no big surprise. Now, we will have content on Christmas Day, ironically. It'll be pre-recorded, but we will have content on Christmas. Um, yep. Because it's Sunday. I always stream on Sunday, or put out something on Sunday. All right, guys, that's everything. We're taking off. Thanks very much, as always, and we'll be in touch very soon.